It is 5.30, it's time to, to call the meeting to order. And the Board of Selectmen is here, all of them? Yeah. Yes, we're all here. And I'll call the meeting to order. And first order of business, the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Charlie Moselle will lead us in the approach. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The approval of the minutes for December 18th. to accept as written. Second. I'll second. Second. Motion was made by Ms. Hartley, second by Ms. Barney. Any questions on the Reddit? Seeing none. All in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion Mr. Passes. Chairman, I'll, I'll yes. abstain. You'll abstain? Yes, sir. That's because you weren't here. Right. You were on the phone. No. No? A part of it anyways. Okay. Thank you. Please note that. First, I want to say thank you to everybody that's here this evening. This is uh, great to see this amount of people with interest in what's going to happen here this evening. Thank you for coming. And now I'll accept the motion to go into a public hearing. I'll make that motion. Mr. Finch makes the motion. I'll second. Second by Ms. Barney. I mean, Ms. Ms. Hartley. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions, answers? All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion passes. We're in the public hearing, and we'll turn it over to the gentleman from Walden to take over the meeting and present to us. This is the second in a series of presentations. This one here is an official public, public, public hearing for, for you folks out there. Thank you. Uh, thank you to the town for inviting us. Uh, uh, thank you to the Waste Energy Committee uh, for also inviting us. Uh, my name is Jeremy Smith. I'm with Waldron Engineering and Construction. Uh, we're here to. Places I can't shut it off. Minor technical difficulty. One moment, folks. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, so we're here tonight. Uh, again, this is the second um, meeting. If you've been to the first, some of this will be repetitive, but there's some new stuff at the end, so please stay with me. And if you are new, again, my name is Jeremy Smith, Director of Business Development at Waldron Engineering and Construction, uh, based here in New Hampshire. Extra New Hampshire is our headquarters, and we've been an engineer, procurement, and construction contractor for 30 years of waste energy success. We are analysts, utility engineers, EPC contractor, that's design, build, called in the building trades, construction managers, commissioning, owners, engineers, and control systems. Uh, Terry Waldron's our CEO out of Kensington. John Sweet, uh, Ken Brookman, but we won't hold that against him. Jeremy Smith of Danville, New Hampshire, and Grant Page out of Londonderry. Our uh, civil partner on this project is Emanuel Engineering out of uh, Stratum, New Hampshire. And just to go through a few of our history of uh, projects, I'm going to turn things over to the Vice President of Construction, Grant Page, who's presenting with me tonight. 
Good evening, everybody. Uh, apologize for those of you that had to sit to this before and look at these, but the new faces in the crowd get to hear a little bit about our experience. Uh, this particular project, the uh, owner's uh, construction manager, and we oversaw a lot of the work that went on with this project when they converted the old uh, paper mill up there to a biomass plant, a uh, merchant plant for power generation. Uh, this plant is uh, similar in size and footprint to what we're going to be talking about later tonight, uh, but it's a much bigger generator and uh, has uh, a bigger, steam, a much larger steam flow than what we're looking at uh, in the waste energy, just based on the, the fuel value. This particular project, uh, Waldron was the uh, EPC contractor, engineer, procure, and construct. So we were contracted to design and build this particular plant down in Louisiana. So we had boots on the ground down there. Um, the engineering team put the plans together and the construction management team went down there and executed this. Um, this was a, um, <clears throat> this is more of a petrochem project, but it highlights our experience with the uh, generation and the combining this into a plant. This particular plant was able to not only um, start to provide its own power inside, but provide resiliency, and it could actually uh, island from the grid when they had some kind of a disaster. So this was a good uh, project for that particular facility. Mm -hmm. So this is a true waste energy. This is a project that uh, actually Jeremy designed, and I estimated and worked on the construction of when I was with another firm. Uh, but this is a true waste energy plant where they're collecting the um, biosolids and making it to a digester and putting it into a digester and burning in a reset. This required a significant amount of permitting, uh, which uh, Walden did a lot of the lion's share of that work, and uh, quite a bit of interconnect study and feasibility with the utility to get this one uh, to go for the city of Nashua. And it was a successful project for everyone involved that I know of. So this is a project that we're currently constructing. Waldron was uh, approached uh, to be the EPC contractor up at the Lebanon, uh, New Hampshire uh, landfill, where they're collect right now, they're currently flaring all the gas from the landfill. So what we're doing is putting in some micro turbines to give them the ability to um, you know, power their own uh, source from behind the meter and to uh, cut down on their utility bills. So this is uh, one they're actually looking to get some heat off of in the future as well, but they're fairly small turbines. Um, this is a great project because all that wasted heat and energy is going out the stack, and now they're going to get and reclaim the power. So again, Walden was uh, very involved with the permitting on this and consulting that led to this uh, project getting released by this the town of Lebanon. I'll turn it back over to Jeremy. He's got the description of the uh, proposed plant here in Ashland. Thank you, Grant. Grant did such a great job at Nashville, obviously we hired him, so that's how good he is. Uh, so this is the uh, current um, plant, this is your current sewage treatment facility, uh, 93 is right there, um, and this is a Collins Street extension that's coming along here alongside these Eversource uh, power lines that you see uh, right there. Great one advance. And this is our proposal to you of the Ashland Power Station, this would be a 12 megawatt waste to energy facility which will be located right here in ashland easy access to 93 bringing in uh, municipal solid waste to the facility processing that and turning that into electrical energy which will then go back out through the ever source lines uh, to uh, the grid and the waste energy cycle uh, basically we have an enclosed tipping floor the, way the municipal solid waste will go into a refuse pit. It'll be grappled out with a grapple crane. That is exactly like if you go down to Hampton Beach and you put 50 cents in the machine, you can try to grab a toy. This grapple is the same idea. Puts it into the chute, goes down the chute, is processed by the system, turned into steam. Steam will then turn a steam turbine, which will generate electricity, which then goes out to the grid. The waste from that, the stream, go through an intense series of environmental controls, a wet scrubber, a bag house, and selective catalytic reduction. So these three technologies together are cutting edge. They're actually in advance of what the EPA Region 1 for this area has asked for, but they do match recent emission controls that have been required of similar facilities in Florida. That's why we think this is where it's going, and the committee has given us direction that they want the newest, cleanest, best technology available, so that's what we're showing you tonight. So, power to the grid, so made from our generator and then into our switch gear. 
will then go into a large dust fuel transformer through an offtake structure and then connect right up to the 115 kV lines that distribute to the major thoroughfare of the grid um, in this area. So you'll be powering uh, regionally, then that power will wheel back to the town of Ashland. So you're making all the energy value of your own power that your Ashland Electric Department currently buys from Eversource. <coughs> so what does one ton of municipal solid waste bring in and where will revenues go? Uh, our primary source of revenue will be tipping fees. The power will have a value. The energy, as I just described, will have a value. There'll be a capacity payment. That's an amount that ISO New England pays us just to have a 12 megawatt generator. And there'll be some miscellaneous generation, fly ash, fertilizer that are saleable commodities. What will this cost us? Well, we're gonna have legal insurance and professional fees for such a facility. There'll be fees and assessments imposed by the state. We'll have an operational staff and we'll have to pay them. We'll have long-term service agreements with our major equipment vendors. And we will have to landfill the residuals from our plant. So that is bottom ash and waste metals that cannot otherwise be sold. At the end of the time, we'll have debt service or bond repayment, and then we'll have a capital improvement fund. Our current cost opinion, the engineer's opinion of probable cost is $135 million. This is a factor based on the cost of capital equipment received to date, with prices still being developed. The opinion costs includes all costs over 3.5 years, which are estimation to design, permit, and build the facility. So we have a 20-year plan, including four years of build-up time. I took a snapshot and picked year seven, so that's project year seven. So that's the seventh year of this process. The plant's now been online for three years. It is 2030. Projected revenues of 22.4 million. Projected expenses 9.6. Debt service 9.3. Our add to capital reserves for that year would be 3.5 million dollars. Thank you for your time and attention. We'll now open it up for questions. Please direct your questions to the uh, chairman and mention your uh, address. David. Um, I'm wondering about the customers for this facility. Do you have any customers at this time or how do you get them? Because, I mean, everybody in the state is now disposing of their trash somewhere, somehow. We can't hear you, David. Okay. Uh, I was just wondering about the customers, how you got to, okay. I was wondering about the, recruiting the customers for this facility. So everybody in the state presumably now has a way of getting rid of their trash. It's not piling up in different towns and cities. So where are you going to get the customers? How are you going to get them to come to Ashland rather than keep on doing what they're doing now? Because to the south of us, there is a, another waste energy plant. And to the north of us, there is a landfills, uh, one of which will close soon, but there is a plan to open another landfill right next to it by the same company. So how do you recruit customers? And I presume they're only interested in how much it's going to cost them. Uh, they'll go to the cheapest place they can to get rid of their trash. So where are you going to find your customers for this? Thank you for your question. Our uh, projected customer ba database, we've gone through, we've looked at all of the trash and all of the, dis where it's going now and where it will go in the future. The uh, thing we have to say about the landfills, as you said, some of them are closing. They have some plans to open another one. Mm -hmm. They got an extension to run one for a little bit longer, but that's only to 2027. So there is going to be additional MSW that does not have a home and the state is realizing this and they are initiating a study however the town has authorized us and we've already commissioned a study and performed a study just in this region we've evaluated that there is enough msw if it can be directed to the facility to feed the facility the numbers we've shown how do you attract customers you sign long-term agreements with them usually about five years and you offer competitive rates and you offer lower transport fees by being where you are physically. 
more access to 93. That's how we will build up our customer base. Plus a certain amount of our capacity to consume MSW will always be reserved for what we call gate or spot rates. So these will be people who do not have a long-term contract with you and are looking to dispose of materials. And some of that can be very attractive, very clean wood. And when you go to a, a gate rate, that gate rate is always higher than the long-term contract. Obviously, if you're willing to sign up for a long time, we'll give you a break on rates. We charge you the full rate if you just come to the gate. So that's how we'll build up our customer base, recruiting from the area, offering competitive rates, and offering a discount because they don't have to transport as far. <coughs> Uh, David, uh, well, we let him finish his question. He's yeah. on the, okay. and I'll right after him. So the tipping fee is the main part of your revenue. So what is that going to be, and how does that compare to your competitors, so to speak? Uh, thank you. We have a competitive tipping rate set uh, currently um, that would, in, you know be of great interest to a lot of the communities in the area. Uh, we're currently starting that tipping rate at $57, but it does increment over time. Per time? Per time, yes. I'm sorry, all, all numbers I'm going to discuss tonight are always keyed on a single time, because that's generally the unit measure we use when we're discussing. And we think that that will be competitive based on other alternates that people will have by the time the facility comes online. Yeah. The uh, question. They give you a name and your address, please. My name is Paul Hicks. I live on River Street in Ashland. Thank you, Paul. I have a two-part, two-part question, if I could, uh, pertaining to what David just said. Have you reached out to the towns to let them know that we are doing this, and that this would be the rate, so we can get the customers? And the other question I had was, our landfill will be shutting down. Correct. It will not be shutting down, so we'll still be able to utilize our own landfill. When it comes to that point in time where we cannot use our landfill, do the town residents have access to this without a tipping fee? Actually, we don't have a landfill. Actually, it's not a landfill. Well, it's a recycling center. Re recycling. The, the recycling center will still be operational because hot metals, cans, bottles, glass, that sort of thing can't go into the waste energy plant. Thank you. If I could further elaborate a little bit on that question. In the model, um, because this facility would not pay taxes, in lieu of taxes, we're doing a number of things for the town. The model is doing. The model is the, what the Waste Energy Committee does. One of those factors is that we are planning to dispose of the entire waste that's reported to me by the Public Works Director of the town with no tipping fee. So that there would be a savings to the town for whatever tipping fee you're currently pay, paying, plus obviously reduced uh, transportation because you're not having to move it from wherever it is now to a new location. Or not that far away, it'll be from your transfer station to the facility that's just on the other side of 90 Thank you. Thank you. Right here? Brand. Yeah. Brand. Fran. Fran. Oh, Fran. I'm sorry, Fran. <laughs> you're right now, you were behind the person. Did you forget me this way? No, you were behind somebody. I lost the hand. I live on the road. It's not on. Didn't. Hello? Yeah, Fran Newton, good. Smith Hill Road. Um, could you give us some more specific details about the traffic flow? I'm assuming you're going to have num number of trucks coming in on a regular basis, and it's difficult to tell from your sketch, uh, your plan where the traffic is actually going to flow? That's an excellent question, and it requires details of the design, so I'm going to turn it over to the Vice President of Construction. Well, I need to bring up the drawing that shows it. Excellent. He's going to bring up the drawing that shows it. But in general, um, again, it's 93. We're coming off. We're using Route 3A uh, to connect uh, to the facility. Nothing would come through um, any of the center part of town, nothing on Collins Street, that part of Collins Street.
So obviously a traffic study hasn't been performed to date because the, the plans development stage that it's in right now. But the current thought is that, um, I know this might be difficult to see at the back, but we have a, we can blow up this section. But the current plan is to actually, right near this ramp to 93. Uh, but right near this ramp to 93, there's a section of that, of Route 3, that's just above the elevation of the railroad tracks that are in that area. And the concept now is that this will be the actual entrance to the plant. So this will have to be filled in here and ramped down into this area, and the road would come in here into the plant. So we can, does the other drawings in that folder journey we have uh, blow-ups of those areas to show? Does that, that answer your question, Brian? Yeah, as much as I can tell. <laughs> we, can, we can zoom in a little bit here, but... Um, when they get off the highway, are they taking, are they going towards Plymouth or towards Ashland? Plymouth. Right, it's actually on Route 3 on the uh, west side of 93. Right near Cedar Lane. Thank yeah, you. Just south of Cedar Lane. That helps. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, the lady in the back there with the glasses? Yeah. How are we going to cross the railroad tracks? <coughs> so that's going to, we're going to, I don't know if you know, familiar with that area, but it's, um, there's quite a drop off between Route 3, the railroad tracks, and down into the, uh, the town's uh, water field that's down there. Um, the plan there would be, uh, obviously hasn't been engineered yet, but we'd have to make that level and ramp down into those water fields. So now it would be all dependent upon a traffic study uh, which would uh, involve New Hampshire Department of Transportation because of the, <coughs> excuse me, because of the state highway. Does that answer the question? Next. Gentlemen in the, the, the glasses in the center there. Me? Yes. Yeah, I Jones only from uh, River Street. What happens if we don't make this $135 million bond? <laughs> Uh, as with any uh, revenue-based bond, um, the risk is that you uh, are putting the value of the facility that you put into it against the bond. So if for some reason you were not able to make your uh, bond payments, the bond could be called. At the time of the call, you would have opportunities to create additional financing opportunities, uh, partnering with whoever you wanted to and finding other sources of funds. In the end of the day, if you are not able to meet the call of the bond, then you would have to sacrifice your investment in the facility. Right, so that would bankrupt the town. Uh, no, sir. You would lose the facility. Oh. And that loses the revenue the stream that was coming in. But again, you've placed this against the revenue of the facility, not against the taxpaying capacity of the town. Right. Now, how long will your company be involved with this particular plan until when, when are you going to leave? If you hire me as your continuing services engineer, I will never leave. But uh, <laughs> I mean, oh, wow. we, we, we will stay on through the entire first year of operation is our commitment to the Waste Energy Committee. Uh, so there'll be um, people from um, two of our major vendors. Uh, one is called Blue Water, and the other is called Babcock and Wilcox, that will be assisting in the training and development of your internal staff during that first full year of operation. That's also six months of commissioning and then one year of operation. So I won't leave you in that respect until the end of that period and you're satisfied. If you do decide to sign a continuing services agreement, which I have with many of my former clients, I'll be here forever. Right, and then the last question. Now, you've been uh, building several different types of waste-to-energy plants, and you've never built one like this. You, uh, there's, you don't. You never built one like this. 
you built uh, gas, right? You built uh, um, biomass, biomass you, but not this plant, right? Right. These okay. are fairly few and far between, so there oh, isn't yeah. a firm that you could bring in. Which is true, which raises the other question. Now, they just built a, a new one down in Palm Beach, which was 20 years after the last one was built, and that was nine years ago, and no one else has built one. Which Correct. raises the question, why are they not building uh, these plants if they are so lucrative? You know, why wouldn't they be there? I know why they're building most of them on the East Coast, because the Atlantic Ocean is right there. So they don't have to worry about neighbors uh, kind of thing. All right, anyway, getting back to my original question. So you've built several different types of plants. Have you gone through uh, what the other type of plants, what they would do for us, instead of just this one? Uh, no, we have only studied for you municipal solid waste energy, that right. particular type of waste energy, but just generically, your landfill isn't of the size that could do a uh, landfill to energy project like we're doing out in uh, the city of uh, town. Yeah, but I know that you've even suggested that we get rid of the organic material in our waste to knock down the waste perhaps by 50%, I believe you said. Yep. Which would be a good thing, but then you have to do something with the organic waste. That's certainly something right, that could which is be done. something else so again. So that would be a whole nother system as opposed to just burning it, right? Okay, but you just didn't go there. No, we have not studied that for you. This waste energy facility, once you've constructed a facility of the size, you want to accumulate as much MSW as possible. Because tonnage, you know, obviously there's a lot of economies of scale here, so the tonnage required to meet this, you want to derive all of your energy from that one process once you paid for it. I agree with you, there could be multiple processes, but that would drive costs considerably up. Well, if we had like a digestive well. investigation, it wouldn't be building this plant plus building the other one plus building the other one, it'd be more investigation. So rather than just going into the incinerator thing, we would be perhaps looking uh, some other way to do it without that $135 million bond, which is not the total cost. Because you didn't include the substation, you got to build another one of those. Now, there's other costs that could be inherent with it that are not. Am I correct? I, I'm sorry, sir. We did include the high voltage yard. All right. So you have that's the total cost. We're not going to be on the hook for anything else besides that 135 million dollar bond. Is that, cr the is that true? Director of uh, uh, our vice president of. And usually, building things is 10 percent over, 10 percent. You know what I mean. But it's, right. a it, cost it the, it's a current cost opinion. It's a current cost opinion. So this is our current cost opinion. Okay. But I'll grant address that. Right. So uh, at this level of design, um, the way that this went is the idea was brought to Waldron. Right. Waldron was con contracted to study this work. So uh, the first thing that was done was, well, what kind, what size plant are we looking at here? So based on the experience, we were able to come up with, okay, in this neck of the woods based on where we think that the, uh, the trash is going to come from, we came up with the capacity of the plant. How many tons per day can this plant? Most of these waste energy plants are categorized that way. It's, it's the tons of, of waste that they can accept per day. Like the one that you were talking about that was built in 2015 down in Florida, that's a 3,000 ton per day plant. That's a behemoth. Uh, this, this one we're talking about here is about 500 tons per day, similar to the one down the road in Penica. Um, so, from there, our engineers take that initial assumed heating value of the fuel that they have, and they come up with, okay, this is about the size boiler that we're gonna have on this project. And from there, they start to outline and do some preliminary calculations on the other equipment involved in the process. <clears throat> so in order to put a, in a cost opinion on that, there's no engineering really done. There isn't a design. It's like asking me, well, I have a 2,000 square foot house. What's the flooring gonna cost? Okay, well. You know, how many you know, rooms do you have? There's a lot left to be designed, right? How many bathrooms do you have? Is, you know, you want, oh, you know, all those things have to be figured out at this point. So the way that Waldron approached this is we know that in our history that plants of this nature, their total cost is um, usually a factor of, you know, you can measure the equipment pricing that you're going to have for capital costs, and you can come up with what, you can kind of predict what that total cost of the plant's going to be. So, um, what we did is we reached out for preliminary uh, numbers on the major equipment associated with the plant, the boiler, which is a very big number in that cost. Uh, the steam turbine, uh, some of the electrical equipment, the pumps, uh, some of the other major pieces. 
And what we did is we built an equipment list and we came up with a number. And at the time of uh, the first uh, release of this opinion, that equipment was about $80 million. So I went back to our historical data and I said, okay, well, these waste energy plants haven't built one in the U.S. since 2015, so I don't have a benchmark to compare that to. So what I did is I said, okay, let me look what I have in my history books for combined cycle plants, which are big you know, combustion turbine steam plants, um, combined heat and power plants, and biomass. So I looked at those, I saw a ratio of the cost of the equipment compared to the rest of the cost of the project, and those ranged from 40 to 55%. So I made a judgment call in this particular case, this is a massive piece of equipment. It's in New Hampshire, most of my other data is in unionized areas. <clears throat> unionized areas of the country with high labor rates. So I figured this particular plant is gonna be about, the capital cost are about 60% of the total. So that's how I backed into the $135 million. So that's how we captured that cost opinion for this process. And to go on to get more data, to be able to come up with a more firm number, a lot more design and engineering has to be done to firm that. Right, so this is a ballpark figure. I mean, it's based on, on things that you've looked up. I'm not saying you picked it up out, out of your ear, but it's a ballpark figure. And then, to the workforce that you want to import from Maine, they're union workers, right? Uh, who's going to build this plant does not know at this Well, time. no, not building the plant, running the plant. Well, that would be, be a town. I think uh, that was mentioned in the last time, at the last meeting that we had, that last WTE thing, something about dolphin. Are you blue talking dolphin. about the blue water? Yeah, you got blue water. I don't know, <coughs> blue water, are they union blue water? Yeah. Uh, blue water war prevailing wage. But they are commissioning and operational training. They're not going to stay here and, and build the plant for you. They might make an offer to the town to become the permanent operator, but that would be an offer that you could look at and evaluate against building up your own labor force. And you'll make right. a good decision, you the town. Right. So the same thing with the plant. It's our decision. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Gentleman over there was had his hand up. Thank you. I'm another one of the River Street uh, here tonight. Um, Spark is my name. I'm out on River Street. I'm not going to talk to you so much about the finances because uh, the microphone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Give my, my, my head cold. You think I'm bad? You should have heard Bill Belichick yesterday. Jeremy, <laughs> Jeremy, uh, I got a bunch of. I'm a physician. I've got a bunch of environmental concerns I want to ask you about, Jeremy. And I've read the minutes fairly carefully of, of the committee that have gone on since, I guess, September. Originally, the intent was to burn post-recycled stuff and the biomass, so that means wood, paper, etc., and exclude plastics. Now, what I'd like to know from you now, and as I've seen these minutes evolve over the last couple of months, it appears that's changed, and so you guys are thinking about throwing plastics into the stream. So that's question one. Are you going to burn plastics in this thing, and what does that do to the stack discharge? How does that affect what's coming out of the stack? A related question, I read the, the, the cattle feed SCR reaction that you're going to use requires, among other things, the injection of anhydrous ammonia into the effluent from the boiler. Is that correct? And that's to, to, to minimize or eliminate the nitrous oxide coming out of the stack. How much anhydrous ammonia will be used? How is it stored? How is it transported? It isn't pleasant stuff. You've all heard about train crashes where the, and they're not talking about that here, but, but where a tank car spills the stuff and you have to evacuate the town. So I'm a little worried about that. How much does that get uh, taken into account? What's coming out of the stack? What particulate matter comes out of the stack? Where does it go? And then the related question, have you, select board, have you talked to your counterparts in the other towns? We're not talking about the water here, we're talking about the air. You know, if we, if we had some issue with the water, you'd say, oh, it's just those River Street people. But you know what? We're all breathing the same air. And that same air is going to Holderness, Plymouth, Center Harbor, Moultonboro, just to name a few. I have concerns about that. And particularly if you get into the business of burning plastics. Finally, and I'll shut up, the bottom ash has to be disposed of. That's, the, that's what's left. That's the residue. You've got some way to sell the fly ash for fertilizer, I heard you say earlier. But the bottom ash, you can't do anything else with it but stick it in the landfill, right? Where's it going to go? How are you going to get rid of it? No one's going to buy it, right? So we have to figure out a way to get rid of it. And how much is going to be produced? I, that was another question. I saw numbers in these minutes that ranged all the way from 125,000 tons per year to 468,000 at one point was mentioned in one of the meetings at, quote, full capacity. 
which dwarfs the idea that you can do this with 50, 50 trucks a day. I mean, I assume the trucks are about 10 tons each. Is that a reasonable guess? I don't know the answer to that at all. I've, I've given you a whole bunch of stuff to answer, and I apologize for that, but the environmental concerns are very real. And I think to answer Joe's question, that may be one of the reasons why nothing like this has been built in the United States in nine years. And there's a total of 75 of them in the United States right now, the majority of which are in the Northeast or in the East Coast, as I understand it. Out West, they don't, they don't use these because they have apparently still a lot of space for landfills. It's something we have to address. I get that. But I'm really concerned about the environmental impact as much as anything else. Okay, so that... So that one mic is turning. I'll put my hand over. Okay. No, I'm just Just press. Just press the button. Great. So uh, I guess I'll. Need some mics too. All right. So I guess I'll address the uh, the environmental question that seemed to be the core there. Um, the environmental question is a good one. Um, it is a waste energy plant and it will put out. Um, rather than quote you um, milligrams per newton meter, which aren't going to mean anything to anyone in the room, but again, we're adopting the most current standards from Florida that have been imposed. We are spending extra money uh, to have a better emissions technology so we can reduce those uh, to their best levels, the best available that um, can be found. So that those emissions, those will be very carefully modeled by the state. The state doesn't allow me to model them, they model themselves. Based on that, we're going to have a pollutant outfall, which is basically an umbrella, and they're going to set the height of our stack such that we are not impacting the residents of Ashland, Holderness, or any of the surrounding towns. So our stack height is an assumption but it's not set until that modeling is done. So they're going to look at our pollutant flows. They're going to look at the worst day ever, because this is how they do it, the worst day ever that we have for emissions, and they're going to set that stack height at that level so that those outfalls do not impact those residents or their health long term. Where are they going to go? Where are they going to go? <laughs> they have to impact somebody. <laughs> those pollutants do eventually come down, but they diffuse into the atmosphere. They grow lower and lower in concentration. Every car that drives is emitting, but if you're not directly in like a garage with a running car, you obviously know those emissions are a lot less. Or if you're trying to shovel snow and your wife starts the car from inside and it spills out on you, you know, speaking from direct experience there. So, so the, um, those emissions will be carefully regulated, monitored, modeled so that the youth impact are carefully regulated, monitored, and set by the state. So we have to meet those emissions and that's what the plant will do. Is there a recent now, there's, uh, study? Also the gentleman asked why they haven't been built. There are large capital costs here that we see. The capital costs have been a bar. There's a tremendous shift going on currently in the cost of tipping fees. That tremendous shift creates an opportunity for new facilities to come online. That's the big drive to do this now as opposed to five years ago or five years from now. Other people will beat you to the punch if you wait for five years. So they, there is a drive that's based on the cost. There's emissions. We have a way to deal with them. And the final thing we brought up was the set for this is 168,000 tons per year of production capacity, 500 tons a day. It is about 50 trucks. Okay. So I, I hope that. Well, I also brought up the ammonia. Thank you. And bottom ash. We're so do bottom that. ash does need to, it's not saleable. Fly ash can be used in concrete. We also have some waste products that might be able to be sold as fertilizer. <clears throat> but bottom ash will have to be landfilled. So there still does have to be a landfill at the end of the cycle. But we've greatly reduced the amount of trash the amount of municipal solid waste by our combustion process and our very complete combustion process to reduce that bottom ash to a very minimal amount. And then that, we will have to pay to landfill and those costs are in our model. The final one is anhydrous ammonia. Um, I have done projects with anhydrous ammonia. Speakers are up there, that's why. Uh, if I move further away from, there we go. I have done projects with anhydrous ammonia. 
Uh, those are very large power plants. A 12 megawatt power plant will be able to use aqueous ammonia. So this is a 19% solution that will be transported as 19% aqueous. It is non-hazardous, does not require a special hazardous transport truck or routing plans. And you can find 19% aqueous ammonia in your grocery store. You do have to look for the industrial uh, cleaner strength. Not the regular Mr. Clean, but the industrial tile Mr. Clean or commercial tile Mr. Clean, that's 19% aqueous. So it's something that would be right now in the grocery store here in town and um, will be able to be brought across the roads. We'll store it in a tank, we'll use it, and then that water burns off and the um, ammonia goes into the process, reducing the oxides of nitrogen. If I can ask one follow-up, and I won't ask another one. That's about the plastics. Does this envision burning plastic or not? Uh, we're not going to make any changes to people's plans for plastics. So if you're um, currently in a recycling program, that's great. You should stay in the recycling program. You will not have to go into a recycling program in order to sell us your municipal solid waste. So it'll be, it'll be there or not, depending just on what you've done in the last five years. So if another town does not have the recycling program that Ashland does have, where we all recycle our plastics, if a town, I pick a town, say Plymouth, for example, I'm not sure they're even going to participate, they could be bringing in plastics that driven to burn. Exactly, right. yes, sir. So if they do not currently have a recycling, you said, I don't know Plymouth has a recycling so or not. The diagram you showed earlier there, is that an additional set of scrubbers or whatever chemicals that are going to go in to reduce the emissions from the plastics? What I read in these minutes essentially addressed the idea that it was it was the smoke, if you will, the, the effluent out of the boiler is going to be treated in this SCR reaction that's directed primarily to nitrous oxide produced from burning biomass, et cetera. And there is some sulfur dioxide as well. But what happens to the stuff that comes up when you burn plastics? Is there another set of, of for lack of a better word, scrubbers in this or something else? Uh, no, sir. We do not trust in the recycling capabilities of the residents or of the surrounding towns. So we're always set up to handle the worst type of uh, municipal solid waste that comes to us. So there wouldn't be a, an additional set of scrubbers that I would add to the project on that basis because I've already prepared for that. In what way? That I, the scrub, the emission treatment system that we have planned for this would be able to deal with the additional plastics. Right. We've built that in. If it doesn't come, great. If we can convince Plymouth to go into a recycling program, that's great for the environment and great for everyone. But if they don't choose to, they don't have to. Uh, Bob. Okay. Bob, 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 Bob. Uh, yep. Remind him that we have a sulfur dioxide scrubbing system that takes care of that plastic. That's the Everybody hear that? No. 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 Peter? We have a lime slurry sulfur dioxide absorption unit that takes care of it. The sulfur dioxide that's produced by the plastics. Yeah, and from that's part of this that's part of the pollution control system. You hit the mic. Yeah. You must be next. <laughs> name name and address, please. Uh, my name is Dave Toth. I live at uh, 54 Smithville Road. Um, I've got uh, a few, two technical questions and then some financial questions for the uh, select board. Um, how is the uh, how is the uh, power plant going to be cooled? There's a cooling tower shown right here. So the uh, condensate uh, from the combustion turbine uh, is required to be recondensed at the end of the cycle. So that's a major source of heat uh, that we have to deal with. So we're going to use a wet cooling tower system to get rid of that. Okay, so you're not going to increase the temperature of the local uh, water? <coughs> no, sir. Okay. Um, how are you going to protect the well field from the trucks that are going to be driving through there? Um, uh, a few years ago when we uh, uh, <coughs> were um, uh, dealing with the, uh, the uh, power plant plan and we had our engineers come in, um, one of the key things was that uh, uh, 
not to have trucks driving across the well field or anywhere near the well field because any kind of oil or gasoline spill, even a small one, um, pollutes the uh, groundwater there. So I noticed that, that you're going to be driving along there, so what are you going to do to protect that well field? That's an excellent question. Uh, fortunately, we do have lining underneath that's going to redirect any spilled fluids, especially also there's wash water from rain as it hits the MSW trucks as they go. So they tend to spill water as they go. So you always want to have that underlying layer. And um, topology is in our favor here. The lowest point in this area is the sewage treatment that's behind us. So water's going to come towards us away from the wellhead. OK, thank you. Um, what is the, uh, I know the select board is preparing a warn article for this. Um, what are you going to be asking for in the warn article? We will be asking the, the town people to vote in favor of allowing us to go forward with this plan for the tune of $135 million. The bond will, will not be needed to be paid back for until it's operational. So the first whole year, first year of operation is, is, is gravy, and you don't have to make the first payments on the bond until the second year. And then you make every payment after, every year there, thereafter. There'll be some graphs out on, on the anticipated revenues and expenditures. You will see those. And how does, the, how does this particular project fit in with our capital improvement program? This is our capital improvement program. Trust me, this town only has one revenue source, and that's taxes. And we're trying not to raise taxes. And there's a lot of infrastructure that needs to be repaired and replaced in this town. That is that is my question. We have a lot of interest, infrastructure that needs to be replaced and repaired. And so I want to know, before I'm going to vote for this, I want to know what all of those costs are going to be over the next 10 to 15 years. This particular, <clears throat> you can't ask me to approve a $135 million expenditure on this information. I need to see this, I need to see your capital improvement plan for the next 20 years at least um, so that I can, I can see how much this is actually going to cost us. It will pay for itself. It will I'm not asking you for that. Yeah. That's, that is not a figure. I want the figures. Well, I, I want the information. I want to see it. Sir, we will provide those numbers for you shortly. We have numbers coming up of the anticipated revenue. It's got to be much more detailed than what we see here. Right. Because as, you know, we heard some of the assumptions that went into this, and this is basically, um, you know, this is basically a first shot at it. You're asking us to pay 135 million dollars um, without, you know, without going to the next level even in the design process. Exactly. We have been planning these meetings. There'll be more meetings in addition to this one. This is the second meeting that we've had on this waste energy plan. And before we get to the March elections, you will be seeing other meetings with, with those figures you're looking for. I mean, they're working on them now, if I'm not mistaken. How detailed is it? Is it this detailed, or are you going to give us... I think it's a little more detailed than that. A lot more information than this. Um, I defer to the... Uh, because uh, it sounds self-serving if I say I've done a great job on modeling the plant. So let me allow your uh, Waste Energy Committee to address this in the level of detail that they've already requested from me and received. I didn't really want to put anything out there tonight, but the committee in the next two months is going to be busier than, than they have been in the last month and a half. I guarantee you that this committee will give you all the information that you need in the next few weeks, let alone a month. We have just been waiting for these substantial figures to be able to put this all together. 
and not have to go back and repeat ourselves and say, oh, well, we forgot this and we forgot that. This has been an undertaking for the committee. It has been extraordinary with the help of Waldron and everybody else to put this, the information that you're getting and the presentation you're getting tonight has been, they've done a fantastic job. And I understand, I understand your question. I'm not asking whether you did a fantastic job or not. Well, I'm telling I'm you we have, and more information will be coming. I'm asking for the details. I'm asking for the financial details because those are the, those are the details we need to make the decision on. Thank you. No, you will, you will be getting, you will be getting more details as we move forward. We're just getting numbers in now. The, every every time we have a meeting, you're going to get more information, and that's how it's going to work. Before you get to vote on it, you're going to have all the information. And the committee's been meeting weekly on everything. It's a huge project, takes a lot of work, a lot of time. And I should, Bob. I understand. Yeah. I understand it takes a lot of time, but it also takes a lot of time for the townspeople to sit and come to an understanding of what's going on, and you're only giving us, like, two months. That's, that's not enough time for us to analyze what's going on here and seeing if, if we really want to um, go ahead and spend $135 million. And you are welcome to attend the Waste to Energy meetings. They have them just about weekly. And, and they're more than happy to let you sit there and listen to the I debates the and, and the numbers coming in. I don't want to go to the meeting. I'm not part of the committee. I want the figures. And that's how we're going to get them to you. So they're, they're coming. They're coming. Just like we said at the last meeting, there's going to be more meetings or more information each time you get more. I think we should have had much more detail than this meeting. It's a huge it's a project. Hearing. It's a huge project. This 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 gentleman's been waiting. So he's next. <laughs> go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Let's see. Okay. Steve Felder, I live on uh, Depot Street in Ashland, and I think I I'm just beginning to learn about what you're doing here, so I don't know a lot of the details. I understand what you're trying. I think I understand what you're trying to accomplish because over the number of years, uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, infrastructure that has to happen in the town and we have to be able to pay for it and I think you're looking at this as a way to potentially help pay for that. Um, I, got a, I guess I got a couple of questions. One of them is myself or other citizens that want to get a better understanding of what you've done so far, the work you've done so far, where can we go to access that information? Is it on the website? Where could we get that information that's been done so far? Will be put on the website. It's, it's already on the town's website under boards and commissions. You can see all the minutes. Again, I have a look at it, so I'll go look at those minutes. But absolutely. But basically, just to get a better understanding of um, what level of detail have we got into to identify whether this is a cost-effective way? Because obviously, that's a pretty large dollar amount for a town this size. So we really need to have a comfort level that um, the likelihood of success is high and what is the risk? Because part of that risk is we're, we're anticipating a certain amount of uh, waste coming in on an annual basis. If that doesn't happen, if it doesn't meet those requirements, what does that do to the town? How do we, how do we deal with that? So, you know, Dave was talking earlier about you know, a lot of times the devil is in the details, and it sounds like you're trying to work on those details. And it, it does seem like it would be challenging to get all those details out between now and March. Maybe you can do it. I don't know. But I think that's probably something that people are going to want to have a lot of. And if you could do more meetings like this and maybe, you know, come up with projections. Okay, here's the timeline of what we're going to do. Here's the anticipated revenues. Here's the anticipated expenses by year. Um, here is, um, if, if we're anticipating particular revenues, where we, 
who's going to go get those revenues? Who's going to be responsible for bringing in that business so that we can have a comfort level that you know will we'll, we'll, we'll be where we need to be to be successful? So again, it may very well be a good project. I just think there's a lot more detail that we have to feel comfortable with to make a commitment like that. So I, I will add this a little bit, tidbit to the to the conversation. We want to have complete transparency on everything we're doing, obviously. Uh, electric superintendent who was basically hired because he has this background, spent the first six months of this year searching for a company that could do this project, do it for New Hampshire, do it for Ashland, so that we didn't get bought up by Big places like Wheel of Barra or Wheel of Brader. What's the other one? Covana. When? Yeah, Covana. Did they actually build these plants in the towns? And then they run them and they own them and they just give you a little slice of the, they give you nothing. And then when it's 20 years old, they say, oh, chores now. Now it needs to be repaired. So that's, this is one of the things. And we came up with an excellent set of engineers of a homegrown company here in New Hampshire with, a, with an excellent background and they have. They got the input with the, 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 the DEA, the EPA rather, and the, the, the federal regulations. They were on top of the ball. Those are the first things we had to do before we even started looking at numbers and cost. So it took almost a whole year to do that. It's a big project. But, but I just want you to know there's a lot of time and energy and people that have worked on this. This isn't this my game. These people are the ones that are putting it together. And they've done a heck of a job, in my opinion. Uh, and, and they may very well have done that. I'm just saying, needing to better understand the numbers and the projections and how we're going to get this. And then when it's done, I'm assuming we as a town are running the facility? Well, the, the plan is that they will run it for the first year, put it together, train the people, the Blue Water people. Go ahead. Yes, sir. This would be your operators? It would be assisted by the Babcock and Wilcox uh, boiler expert and a Blue Water uh, power plant expert. But it will be your employees who are running, and some of them are getting hired early. So we're bringing on people about six months before we quote unquote start operation. So when we vote on the Warren article that you are putting together, we will be voting to um, agree for the town to pursue that uh, yeah, to pursue the building of this project, and, which would be a resource for the town, and we'll own it. And we'll be committing to that dollar amount. Uh, yeah. But it, it also, one of the advantages we have, we own our own electric <coughs> light department. Mm -hmm. That becomes a very positive thing in building this project because we own all the light poles in town, and it, it cuts out a lot of expenses and a lot of other things that these people don't have to go through. And it will keep your light power, your power, your homes down at the minimum rate. Right now, it's probably the lowest in New Hampshire as it is, and it could get even lower than that. Uh, that's what we're looking for. We're looking to get resources for the town so we can do the projects we need to do and keep your electric running and keep the rates low. It's, it's all about you. We asked for your permission last year to pursue this, and we've been pursuing it. And it's still up to you. It's, your, it's going to be yours. And ours. I live here too. <laughs> so we have other people there. Yeah. Hi, Cole, Thompson Street. Um, question: What happens if none of the power companies want to buy the electricity from the plant? They have to take it. No, they don't. Why do they have to take it? They'll have to. Can you provide some sort of information into why they would have to? I mean, you can say they have to, but if there's not some sort of contract, why do they have to? All right, I'll leave you. Second question. Uh, some of your other projects you said were partially funded by DES. Does the state want anything to do with this? And if so, how much would they be willing to fund of this $135 million? Uh, that's an excellent question. At this time, we have not factored in any grant money. Um, you can look to get grants for both from NHDES as other projects we've done in the past have done. You can also look to get federal grants. Uh, but right now, all the economics that we're talking about, um, and to answer an earlier statement, we have done the economics out for the four years and then 20 years, including all of the capital projects required. 
So to put these numbers in front of you tonight, I have done the entire al analysis of the thing for 24 years, four years and then 20. And yes, um, ISO New England uh, will be buying the power, will be an independent power producer, so they will be buying the power directly. And that would be secured before building? Absolutely. Yep, we do an interconnect agreement and they agree to take the power and then you can sell it to ISO New England either as a fixed contract, which may or may not be the best economic choice, or you can do a spot market sales of your electricity and there will be an energy marketing firm that will assist you with that and the costs for 20 years for the energy marketing firm have been wrapped into the model. So, again, it sounds self-serving to say I've done a great job of this. We've done a very complete model. I have a team that works with me, and we are power plant experts. So I don't think that there's something that someone's going to bring up that we haven't already included in your financial model. Is Thank there you. a minimum of a tonnage of trash that would have to come in on a daily basis in order for the plant to make revenue? Yes, sir. A six megawatt facility, or if we're only able to find about half of the trash, would not generate any capital reserves. So if for some reason we were only ever able to find half of the trash that we think is available currently as MSW, that facility would pay for itself, but not deliver any capital reserves. A 12 megawatt plant, like we are currently planning, will add capital reserves to your budget year after year, which we have plotted out for you. How much do you estimate that this region will be able to bring in on a daily basis? How much waste, how much tonnage of waste do you estimate that this region will be able to bring to the plant to ensure that it is making revenue? I believe there's 400 and... Let me not throw a number out. There's in the vicinity... You can put a number out there, that's okay. There's a, there's a number that's greater than 400,000 tons is available within reasonable distance for us to get. Does that mean that that 400,000 tons? Well, it can't because we can't process that, process that per year. But we're looking for that percentage of it. Yes. Thank you. Uh, you had a question? Uh, it's partially answered. Okay. Uh, it's, I just have a problem with figuring out how $22.4 million is going to be generated and how did they come up with that figure? Uh, so if we switch back to the revenue slide, uh, the sources of revenue. So the majority of it comes from tipping fees. So that tipping fees amount includes both contracted amounts and gate amounts and um, MSW coming in. So that's the majority of our the money coming in. And then we sell the electricity and then get the power value. Uh, I understand how you think it's going to be generated, uh, and it's always a big if uh, how many customers will this place get is unknown. So in March, we have to go for $135 million without any <laughs> without any insurance that we are actually going to uh, do anything with this project. Um, I'll repeat, no money goes out of the town until the second year of full operation. That's four years out. You will not see any impact on your taxes. Zero. What we're asking you to do is give us permission to go forward with it and we're explaining to you where the money comes from and where it goes. And there will be some money left over for the town. It's never going to be all of the money, obviously, because it's expensive to run a plant like this. You're going to have probably 40 people working there, running two, two ships 12 hours a day, probably 12 on, 12 off. And then a third shift to make up the difference when the other ship has to go on vacation or time off. Whatever, whatever it may be. So there's going to be a lot of people involved. So it's a cost of running the plan, but there's going to make money for the town. And it's going to be in the maze. It would be nice if we were to show that we're going to make money. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to show you that. You're asking us to 
to spend a hundred in the second year. Second year of operation, that's four years old. Yeah, second year of operation, you're asking us to spend a hundred and thirty five million dollars with not much uh, we haven't seen that we have people that are willing to bring their trash here. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, he doesn't think the people have enough people bringing trash in. Um, and he, he's no contracts yet. But but there are more trash around than places to dispose it. One at a time, please. What was that? <laughs> I said uh, so. George, my husband, he hauls trash for 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 wind waste down south. There is more trash than places to put it in. And so the trash from Concord goes to Berlin on the landfill because there is nowhere to put it. And we are halfway. We actually. 40 minutes away from Concord, Z zero waste would want to use us if we give good good rates. And I'm not even affiliated with the project. I just I just know because my husband holds trash. That's why I know the details of how it works. There is no <laughs> no lack of trash. Yeah. It's a funny way to it. Everybody develops trash, and, and our public works director does so much well, trash we generate. So let me just tell you guys, <clears throat> we're part of the 19 towns in the Pemi Baker Solid Waste District. Every town in that solid waste district wants to bring their trash to Ashland, and they've already told me this in person. You have countless trucks from MBI and Zero Waste that come up 93 on a daily basis. You don't see them, but they, they would rather dump their trash in Ashland rather than going all the way up to Bethlehem. It's a lot less for them to do that. There is plenty of waste out there. We'll have enough waste. You guys got to present this like the water and sewer when you guys built the septic receiving. You assumed that the haulers were going to come in and dump their waste, right? Uh, we also you went assumed out to it. Ask. And Jeremy has done a, a performer. We I don't know. have it finalized yet, but he has gone out. His team has gone out and they've got a, done a 20 year 24 year 20 year 24, project, 24 year production. We have all this data on a spreadsheet, but we aren't ready to give that because he's still fine-tuning it. You'll see it. What but will we see? You'll see it. It's almost ready, right, Jeremy? Will we see an analyzed version, or will the raw data be available? The raw data will be available. But right now, this you guys did a great job with the accepted receiving. You're making $600,000 a year on that plant that you built in Allen to David. And you assumed that they were going to bring the sewer here. Yeah, they did. Now they're doing it. Well, they went to Plymouth for a little while, and then we lowered their rates. And now they're all coming to Ashton. But when uh, we built the plant, we did not assume that they were going to come here. Well, you have to assume it. You don't know they're going to come. We, There's a lot of options. They can go to Franklin and Plymouth. have options, but we talked to each one of them. In exactly what Jeremy's team will do. We will, if, if this all comes to the fact that we're not, it's not going to, we're not going to make money. The committee's not going to do it. We won't go shut it right off. It's it, all the projections we have today is that it will make the town money. If it, it will at least make what the town's portion of your taxes is every to every and more and more of that every year. At least 3.5 million. That's the town's portion of the taxes. So it's very important that I know it's a lot of data. We've gone, I don't, you know, we've gotten a lot in the past three weeks. And it's a lot for you guys to all get take in, but we are going to have some more public hearings on this. Not public hearings, but just informational meetings. And we'll have all those spreadsheets for you guys to take home and look at. And hopefully you'll have more questions at the next one we do. And get to the point where you can actually say, yeah, I do feel pretty calm. It's a lot of money. I live in this town, too. I don't want to bankrupt the town. But this is a revenue bond. That's what you guys got to remember. It's a revenue bond. It's not going to come out of your tax rate. Thank you. <coughs> this gentleman right here, and then that lady over there. Tom Mullis, Highland Street. I think I heard, I'm not sure if I understood correctly, but... In regards to uh, defaulting on the bond, uh, that possibly ownership of the plant could go back to the builder, or we would lose that 
and none of us can predict what costs are going to happen in the future, but it sounds as though this town is in desperate need for infrastructure rebuild. So let's say, for example, we do default. You, as the town, has the power to get the money from the taxpayers to try to make up for the loss. Would that happen if that did incur? Say that that possibility did happen where we were going to default, your only source of money would be from the taxpayer to cover some of these losses. Would that possibly happen? Because it is legal for you to do that on a bond. Well, that's a good question, but you'd ask me to assume the Predict future, you know, and I well, can't, I can't do that. But I, I would say this, the DES and the federal government is going to give us grants to build this plant. They think it's a worthy cause, and, they, and they, they're looking for plants to be built around the country because they need more power in the electric grid. It's not a, it's not a, a secret that we don't have enough electricity out there in the grid. It's not a secret because they're shutting down all the nuclear plants, and they got they got to make up with somewhere. And the wind turbines and the solar panels are not making up the difference. They help, but they're not making up the difference. Every little bit is being added to the grid. This is just another one of those things that adds to the grid. I don't see how it moves. So I can't answer the question. Again, it's easy for you to say you can't see how it loses, but in in the past these things were supposed to be built. Let's, let's, let me give you an example. What happened with Northern Pass? That was going to put a ton of energy on the grid. But people didn't want to see their, their environment destroyed in the state of New Hampshire by having these towers go through. And Eversource lost that. And I can go back even further to public service of New Hampshire. We thought that the, the Seabrook nuclear plants were going to be the answer. They wouldn't even know how to, to bill us. It was going to be so cheap. What happened? They went bankrupt, public service in New Hampshire, because of that, that project. You've got to look into the future. Um, you, you touched on something that I know a little something about. I was there in the legislature when all this occurred. Northern Pass didn't go through New Hampshire because New Hampshire found out we weren't going to get any of the power. They were going to ship it all down south. And so we decided that that was not a goal. And guess where they went? with the Vermont. So the power is could still get Actually, the power is going to come through New Hampshire, but it's going to be underground. No, they're going through Vermont. They're actually... They're I, just saw, yeah. I just saw a study where they're going to come from Canada underground no. into New Hampshire and then through existing lines. Well, you know, I, mean, I went to those. I, I, I went to all those meetings. I'm, I'm just telling you what I know about it is, is, a, is a failure. We, New Hampshire was not going to get anything from that project. So I know, we said we don't. don't. No. And, and not only that, but people didn't want it, so it didn't happen. That's the way it is. And that could be right here in this town. It could be. I hope not. I mean, this is a, you know, since the mill has gone down, this town has had no resources, and, and the infrastructure has paid a heavy price for it. That there was somebody over here that wanted to speak. Well, you, uh, yeah, I, I already asked a question, yeah. and you want to give a shot to I want to give a shot to some other people. Yeah, I mean, I really would like to. Oh, this gentleman back here. Thanks, Bob. Uh, Mike Ferg at One Bronze Avenue. Just want to um, add a little bit more to the physician in the corner over there on River Road. Uh, you know, the word environment came up many times tonight. And my first question, even before anything gets off the ground, is this site clean? Does a phase one or a phase two need to be conducted? because uh, we do have some contamination nationally, number one. And number two, uh, when is an environmental impact statement going to be conducted? And that can take a lot of time and energy and money. So we talked about plastics, vapors in the air. That study needs to be addressed by that. And there's a lot of talk about the state, but what about the EPA? There's probably permits that need to be required at the national level, too. So, Thank you very much for your question. Uh, yes, there does need to be a level one um, ESA, level two. Uh, we've toured the site. We've evaluated some of the debris that's there. Um, we don't see anything that looks contaminated, but that's just a cursory inspection. We obviously need to come back with the details um, and do the environmental impact. 
and all those assessments are part of the permitting and engineering plan for the facility. Question, but I also would like to know timeline wise when that study would be done before you think you're going to be breaking ground. Um, typically, there have been other companies that have come and made way, made preparations in order to get what they want. And I just want to know the impact study is going to be done and who's going to do it. Also, has anybody talked to the towns that have similar, I know not the same, but you said New England is kind of the place where we're finding trash, recycling, in amongst New England. Has anybody talked to other towns, not the people running it? but the townspeople, how they've been impacted. Are they glad they did it? You know, was it productive cost-wise? Has any of those kind of things gone on? Thank you. Uh, thanks for your question. Um, so we'll go to the um, Nashua project. Um, so I think if you ask the residents of Nashua, um, at the end of the day, if they're happy with their waste energy facility, I think you would, would find a resounding yes. Um, there have been um, carefully monitored emissions from that facility. Um, as we said, we did a modeling of it, made sure that those weren't impacting the residents, and they've immediately been able to derive the value of the plant that I designed and Grant built for me um, to that um, town. So they already are benefiting from that and have been for many years. Um, it's been running great and they're very happy. I encourage, and you already have checked our references with them and I encourage anyone to talk to anyone in Nashua about um, their waste energy facility. Impact um, in global warming, is anything been done in with that aspect? Thank you so much for bringing up this question. So waste energy as a technology is of great importance to our global warming prevention strategy because we are, as a society, we need to move away from landfills. It turns out the primary issue with landfills is emissive methane. And we have found that methane is the great destroyer of our environment. So all of the waste that we thought we were safely putting into the earth, even those facilities where I've been able to cap them and put an energy source that's deriving energy, the field itself still has a lot of fugitive methane emissions. And so landfills as a technology we need to get away from in order to save our planet, in order to help our global warming. So Asheville will be doing its part. In fact, you'll be doing a part for the entire region. Should you choose to vote for the facility, it is a vote for saving our planet. Okay, last one. Last one. <laughs> we gotta have a meeting. That's me. I don't need the mic. Oh, you don't need the okay. mic. <laughs> as far as buying uh, electricity from Mike Sisto, New Hampshire Department of Energy, he says the answer is no. Eversource, Liberty, Unitil, they don't have to buy our power. All right, they don't. So that's from the Department of Energy. All right. So you want to conflict? You can go to him. Uh, as far as environmental impact is concerned, yes, a study needs to be, how can we vote on this thing in March when there's been no environmental impact study? It's one of those things, going to take time to do. I think that needs to be addressed before, again, another one of those pieces of information that we need before we can make a sound decision. You know, we're rushing into this thing over here like we're going to die tomorrow. You know, it, it's not a good thing. Um, and there was one more point I had to make. Boom. All right. Okay, no. two jokes. Yeah, yeah, all right. No, um, right. no, no. Well, Rom Romney, yeah, yeah, they might want to do it too. Um, 
we we're not getting it. I mean, I look for uh, the minutes for the board of selectmen on uh, online, and they ended October second. So I don't understand what's going on with that. Now there's a bit of a uh, information halt, right? So there's something going on. Maybe it's the computer. I have no idea. But we're not getting information. I can't see how you're going to come up with something good with information that we're going to be able to vote on in March. All right? I think this is being rammed down our throats, and I don't like it. Okay. Uh, just to touch on that just a little bit, this is not something we just jumped into. We, a year ago, we were planning this, and we put it on the ballot and asked the town if they were willing to let us do a research and come up with answers. And this is what we've been doing for the past year. Uh, Jeremy tells us it'll take three years to build the plan. That's four years. This is not jumping into it all at once. So it's a long-term project and it takes a lot of time, a lot of energy, right, and a lot of study. And, and a lot of approval by federal agencies and state agencies. You just can't go out and build a plan. You've got to get permission to do that. You're exactly right. Yeah. And yes, I know that. But you're asking us to make a major decision in March. And we hired and we can't back out of it to do this, and they're giving you the best efforts. I mean, as far as the committee's concerned, they weren't even completely set, set in until September. Right. That's right. That's when they were sworn yep. in, no, in I, September. I know that. You know, September yeah. 29th. It took a long time to get an engineering company. Yeah. And, and well, you know, I mean, uh, again, I think that... I can't see us making this commitment at this time. Okay. I really can't. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? This gentleman here. Uh, is this considered green energy, first of all? No. No. Thank you so much for that question, sir. Yes, the federal government considers this as a renewable energy project. So the state of New Hampshire has their own interpretation, but the federal government will be granting us a production tax credit because of our renewable energy status and the fact that we are not burning fossil fuels of a limited supply. We are burning an energy source that is continually renewing because we're all generating MSW every day. But thank you for that question, so, sir. I don't know much about this, but I've heard about these green energy credits. Uh, and they, they don't have any more, but that they, like hydroelectric plants, small ones, they have these credits and they sell them to Eversource. Is that something we can do? Uh, again, thank you for the question. Uh, currently, they are not, and that's what the other gentleman alluded to, that Eversource, quote unquote, doesn't have to buy our electricity. No. This will be an independent power producer that sells electricity to the grid, to ISO New England, not to Eversource, not to Liberty not to um, uh, any of the other utilities in the state. We will sell our power to the ISO New England, to the larger grid, and get paid for that. The federal government, for every kilowatt hour you generate here, will give you a renewable energy payment called a production tax credit to you because you are a renewable energy source. If in the future, New Hampshire decides as a state to change its stance on renewable energy credits in regards to MSW, then yes, you would have those credits, and then yes, Eversource, Liberty, and other utilities would have to buy them from you. Uh, but currently, I'm only talking about a renewable energy status as a federal issue, not as a state issue. State laws change and frequently do change. Now, the other thing, how much electricity does this generate compared to what the town of Ashland uses? Thank you for that question. Um, this facility will generate around 99 million watts of energy, and you use about 19. So that makes the residual, again, in lieu of taxes, we have offered to consume, as I said earlier, six, your, your tonnage of MSW without a tipping fee. We will also be providing you the energy value of your complete electrical draw by your electrical department for the entire town at no energy cost. Remember, I've used the word energy cost several times to explain energy has several different values. Some of it is the amount it takes to generate that electricity, and some of it is the amount to deliver it. So Eversource will still charge you for the service, 
of wheeling or moving your electricity from the facility back onto your own local grid. But that energy value will cost you zero dollars because we're offering that to you, the facility is offering it to you as part of in lieu of taxes. I don't understand that, what you're saying. What taxes? In, in lieu of tax, in, for the right of using your land, for yeah. using your land, this facility is placed on your land, it's on your town, so you should derive some benefits. So we are consuming all of your MSW without charging you a tipping fee. You still have to pay to, to drive it to the facility. And we are producing the energy value. It's a portion of your electric bill. If you go home tonight and you open your Eversource, Liberty Utilities, or whatever, a National Grid electric bill, you'll see there's an energy value portion of your bill, not stranded cost, not customer charge, it's something called the energy value. That's the value that we're offering to the Ashland Electric Department, that they will get 19 million watts of power every year generated by the facility at no cost. Okay. This is, you mentioned something before about in lieu of taxes. Who's going to own this facility? The way that we have this structured right now, you own the facility. I'm a consultant to you. You will own it. I know we've talked a lot. We talked about Babcock and Wilcox. We talked about Blue Water. Those are subcontractors who will work for Waldron who will assist you. But as we have this structured right now, this is your facility. This is the Ashland Power Station, owned by the town of Ashland, operated in the same way you operate your sewage treatment or your electric utility. You would own this as be an asset, a revenue generating asset for you, for your children, for your grandchildren, for your grandchildren's children. <laughs> okay. I just was kind of confused because you keep saying we will let you bring your trash for nothing. Well, the town owns a facility. The town makes those arrangements. Maybe we push with the town. But you keep saying we will let you. You're going to Excellent. I, I will often personalize in a speech, and I do apologize for that, sir. It's because I'm always very involved in the modeling mm -hmm. from the beginning to the end. Former power plant operator, I used to say the th same thing about the power plant I ran. I said, my power plant. No, the United States Navy, Navy owned that power plant, not Jeremy Smith. But I still talk about it, my power plant. So I, you are correct, sir. And that's why I tried to catch myself. The town of Ashland will provide itself with free disposal of its MSW. The town of Ashland will decide to provide itself with the energy value of the, all the electricity that you take from the grid. You will make that decision, or you'll decide to charge yourself for it. Completely up to you. The model that we've created assumes that the facility, the facility model, does not get any revenue from the disposal of MSW from the town of Ashland or the provision of electrical energy service to the town of Ashland Electric Department. I just got one other question. <laughs> as, as a no allows. <laughs> How come big companies like waste management, places that have landfills full of garbage, aren't doing this? I, I think you'll see a lot of this start up as the state completes its own survey of MSW. And they certainly are paying attention to the rapid increase in tipping fees that has occurred in the last three year span. So that is the genesis. That's why suddenly this has become something. Um, and again, they need the right conditions. They need highway access. They need land. They need a committee, a community that's willing to accept their buyout and their offer of whatever they would offer you uh, for an annual payment. So. If you wish you you're the town, you were making the decision to move forward. You made that decision a year ago. And it's turning out to be a pretty smart one so far. See how you vote. And I hope you vote in our favor. Yeah, this is such a great environmental climate change thing. And it's gonna be green energy and it's going to do such great, amazing things for the environment. How is the EPA and the federal government not coming to you with all sorts of money to offset the cost for this? Why does this the town of Ashland have to take out a bond? To do this, how are you not able to secure some sort of money and be coming to the town of Ashland, being like, we have this much money already allocated to us to do it because it's going to offset 
climate change by this number, it's going to take this much carbon out of the air, it's going to prevent this much fossil fuel from being burned. How can you say it's such a great thing for climate change without having any proof of that? And why would they not be doing these on all sorts of other places? Why wouldn't this be being built all over the world if it was so amazing? Thousands of them. Thousands of them. Thousands of them. There hasn't been one built in nine years or something like that. that we sell them this is insane. We want to own the plant. That's why we want to own it. Uh, just, a, just a little a tidbit about the tipping. No, piece. answer the question. No, you came in a minute. This is my meaning. I want him to answer. It's a public hearing. I know it's, but I, I want, want the it, expert, so I, the expert have to answer. Just I want the expert to answer. Let him, let Jeremy in. Let Jeremy, right. answer. Jeremy, let the answer. answer the question, please. Yes, sir. The landfill is the worst thing you can do in regards to if you're trying to compare combusting or processing the MSW at this facility versus landfilling it. So that's why this I say this is good for the environment. We'll provide you with a white paper uh, put out by an international society, not put out by me, put out by an international society that studied this, that's saying why we should encourage MSW plants over landfills. Again, you have to have the right combination of a community willing to accept it, you have to have the transportation network, and you have to have the know-how and have the will of the people. So if we can combine those here in this facility, we can make what's not been happening happen here instead of happening in another community near you, which is entirely possible if you don't vote for the plan. How can this be so environmentally like clean if plastic, batteries, food, people aren't going to be separating their trash. There's going to be so much mixed trash coming in. There's going to be plastic coming in. You admitted earlier that if people bring their plastic to you, you're not going to make them change their ways, that you're going to burn that. Yes, sir. We have mission controls already planned for the plastics. So we are planning, even if they were to tell us that they're going to do recycling, there's still going to be individual amounts of plastic that work its way into the regular MSW cycle because we're all human, we all make mistakes, you put the milk jug in, you saw you put it in recycling or your kid didn't do what you told them. There's going to be plastic either stream no matter what. So we're planning for that and if it doesn't come in the stream then that's a benefit. Again, I didn't say there weren't emissions, I said the emissions are better than if we landfill. That's all. Thank you. Um, just one little tidbit. Uh, the town of Ashland carries their trash out to Bethlehem every week. And the cost of the town is $100,000 plus a year. So that will also go away. So I mean, it has to go somewhere. And trash goes in, into the side of a mountain up at Bethlehem. And you heard what Jeremy says, what happens when it creates methane over, over years. This is a different kind of solution for trash and for making energy out of it. It just makes more sense. It's a it's a new a new way of doing things. It's on. Yeah. Kathleen DeWolf, North Ashland Road. Um, I came across this today. That um, Casella has uh, finished their pre-application discussions with New Hampshire DES, and on uh, as of now, their permit has been extended to 2027. And on December 14th, 2023, they submitted to the Wetland Bureau an application for the Grand State Landfill to be developed over a 20-year period. So that is pending before DES right now. Um, the other thing, what is the human element to this? We have a person who abuts this area. Has anybody reached out to her and, and discussed with her that she's apt to have over 50 trucks crossing her property to get to this site. She has deed, she has deeded language, she has language in her deed that only allows water and sewer to cross a, over the uh, railroad tracks on a portion of her property across the protected wealth head area, across the Pemi overlay, and nobody has reached out and spoken to her. It's been on their, the committee's agenda two or three times, yet the woman is sitting here. I think it would only be the right thing to do to have somebody 
have a discussion with her how this is going to personally impact her and her property. This came up during the Northern Pass process where nobody sitting at that table was involved. National Conservation Commission was, and other members sitting here were in town government. I pulled up the old uh, application to the SEC, the response from the Conservation Commission. I have a copy here. You can take out tower and put in waste to energy plant, and it would be the same document that the, it would be applicable today. So there's a lot more to do. I don't understand why you're rushing this to warrant. We need a written report from the <coughs> committee when they're done, gathering all their information. A report needs to be given to the public on the town website so everyone has access to it. Put it on next year's warrant. You're, you're going to decide tonight whether you're going to ex put this on the warrant and then tell us, oh, we're going to give you more information by March. Um, I don't understand the process because I've sat at that table before and we have never gone forward in any capital project asking the, tax, the voters to take our word for it. We'll give you more information, but please vote for this. If I could address the question about the access road, um, we did initially evaluate the connection um, that's down on um, Cedar Lane. Um, unfortunately, the uh, improvements required to Cedar Lane uh, made that an untenable connection. Uh, so Weir Road is not connecting through the passage that I, I am aware of that you just spoke of that has the deed restriction. Uh, the easement restriction of only being for the municipal water plant. We are cutting in a south of Cedar Lane, so that uh, person's property would not be impacted by the road or the crossing. Somebody should have still reached out to us since it was an agenda item. She's in a butter. It wasn't an error. Well, we again we evaluated crossing there. There was a thought to do that. We evaluated it and then decided that that wasn't the path forward that we want to do for the preliminary design. The design team in conjunction with the Waste Energy Committee that that improvements to Cedar Lane would be too cumbersome and too impactful to local residents and so we decided to spend additional funds so it costs more money to cross here because it's actually a better crossing anyway. Cost more, cost more money. Yes sir. Yes ma'am. <laughs> We got other people haven't spoken yet. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy Lepore, you'll have. You mentioned 50 trucks a day, <coughs> and you've mentioned the entrance down by 93. What about the trucks that are going to come potentially from the other side, from Moultonboro, Senna Harbor, Tuftonboro, Wolfboro, Ossipee? Aren't all those trucks going to come like the septic trucks do? Right through the center of town? To the best of my knowledge, those folks are in the Penny District Waste Agreement. They, they're are not, they? but they could come through town, yes. Yeah, they could. Well, they could come, they could come through town? Yeah. 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 If you're coming from Old Bar, yeah. yeah. Yes. Right down Main Street. Yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's possible. The, world, the road isn't wide enough. Yeah. Yeah. They may come through, they may not. Then that means they pass along Little Squam Lake and all of that. Uh, so I have one question about the uh, the bond and the uh, and having to vote on it. If it's going to be 130 million or whatever the number is, and does that have first? Does that have any federal funds in it, or does it have any uh, DES funds? And if it doesn't have those in it, then we're able to obtain those. How does that work? How does that extra how does that extra money get applied to the account? Does the bond get paid down from 130 to 50? Or is that a yes? Uh, no, thank you. Um, the permission that we're seeking, uh, that again the waste energy committee and the and the select board, the town is seeking from the voters is permission to seek a bond up to that value. So if we are 
again, trying to be a, a, a good consultant for you, not assuming things that I can't provide you certainty on. If I get a grant for $15 million, then yes, you don't have to bond, you know, 135 becomes 120. That would be the math. Thank you, sir, for that question. Hi, John Reese, Hill Ave. I have a question about the typical lifespan of a plant like this and any associated decommissioning costs. Thank you for that question. Um, so yes, the life cycle is in excess of 30 years. Uh, we have a capital improvement program that would be executed. Uh, again, we've modeled the first 20 years of that. There would be a decommissioning cost that would be um, experienced at the end of the life cycle of the facility if you chose not to um, rebuild and revamp the entire facility in its place, which would be um, you know, a Warren article or a decision made by uh, a future um, can go out in the town, but that's 40 plus years in the future. Okay. Ta da! Joe Mazzoni on uh, River Street. You're right about the landfill being the worst. That's the worst you, case scenario. Incinerating is the second worst. All right? On a global level, and why? Well, a lot of these plants are being decommissioned, and people are learning how to do things differently. Instead of buying one-use one uh, plastics, and they're learning how to buy things in larger quantities. Knock down the waste. This is what's going to uh, actually give us... The carbon that's going to come out of here is, while less than a landfill, is certainly not beneficial. Okay? So uh, that's the idea. This here makes it more convenient to keep buying those single-use items which is why on a global level they kind of want to get away from it. In other words, putting your feet to the fire so that you learn how to live sustainably, okay? So while it's a, I can understand, oh yeah, you're not going to change people overnight, right. But this isn't the only answer, which is why I brought up earlier about the various other ways of dealing with waste you talked about in Nashville. You're doing water down there which is great, that's a nice thing. But we can do things, uh, we can recycle more. Our, our, our transfer station, they only accept certain amount of things. I have documentation from Pen Penobscot. The workers were over there deal with fires every day on the kind of people throw lithium batteries in there, fire extinguishers, they still have propane tanks, still got gas in it, and these things burn. You know, and they can't do anything about it except try and put out the fires. Uh, Bonnie was going to visit the uh, the waste to energy plant down in Pennycook. Wheel of Breda. And uh, they had a fire in November, and they haven't been able to let people in yet due to lithium. So, you know, it, it's a tough situation, and it's a dangerous thing. It's really not, you know, peaches and cream. And it's not the... Uh, Look, there's no incinerators in Shangri-La, okay? So, yeah, while it's a good thing, it's going to help us, but 80% of these things are built in low-income areas, right? And that's true. So that's my point. These things, while they might serve an initial benefit, they're not the answer. Thank you. I'm unclear if there's a question I was supposed to answer, but they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't let uh, people in, they wouldn't give tours. Uh, this is actually a, a question more for the select board. There's been a couple of comments tonight about long-term infrastructure needs in Ashland, and I don't think anyone would disagree with that. One of the ones that I'm aware of is a wastewater treatment plant. Our lagoons are old technology, and they're not going to sustain us long-term. We've been very, very lucky with them because we've all also gotten revenue from them to, to keep the water and sewer plant going. But we will need a wastewater treatment plant, which is going to be roughly in the same area, I'm assuming, as this facility. And have you thought about um, how you're going to balance those two needs? Fred, you want to handle that one? <laughs> because I know you, you've got the in, in, information on uh, the money that's being spent over there. <clears throat> The federal and the state governments are currently giving us funds to rebuild the sewer system in the town, the treatment plant, okay, and the lagoons. Those lagoons are going to disappear at some point in time. 
Uh, you currently have a very large bond issue, which you authorized for us to go out there and do that. And the federal government and the state government are paying for that, thank goodness. Uh, I know this town, when I was here in 83, had just built the plant. And they had put it in operation a number of years before. Um, don't look at, look at give toss in the mouth, I guess is what I say about sewerage. Because the federal and state governments had offered to give the plant to the town for free. When they originally offered it, and the town turned it down year after year after year until it cost you something. They're giving us something. Now, there's a bond issue on here for water uh, that we talked about tonight. We're trying to get money to save you money. That's why I've kept the municipal portion of the tax rate flat for the last three years. I can't continue to do that if we don't make money. The question was, do we have a lot of facilities that need to be repaired? No, we have a lot of facilities that need to be replaced. Right. I've been doing this since 1962. The town I started with is currently sending two to four trailer trucks of trash. 25 tons of trash per day per truck <coughs> to western New York State, almost to Buffalo. That's going to continue on for a number of decades. They're fortunate because the person who owns the landfill happens to live in that town. But, and he made space available for them. Those things have to happen. I agree. We but have to get rid of our trash somewhere, and I think what we're trying to do... Is there a plan for that facility along with this waste to energy plant? Only, we only have so much land in this town. That's so correct. Saying, we, only have, about a plan. we only have so much land in the United States, and, and we're using it up. That's not the issue <laughs> at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, going, it's going to be the issue. Well, but for us, for the vote, the issue is this small little geographic small town of Ashland, do we have room for all of this stuff? And do, do we have at least a plan? You for have, going forward. you have, I've been doing this for over 60 years, and I can tell you you have room for plant. One of the things that I told the board needs to go into the bond article is the fact that all the waste that's generated that can't be sold, because some of it can be, needs to go to a landfill, okay? There is a large corporation in New Hampshire that's building a 50-year landfill just down the road, okay? And I'm not too sure that the people in uh, that city are too happy about that, but it's going to be there because the state's already approved it. And I don't think we should be burying anything in Ashland. Ashland is too small a municipality to do that. If I had my way when I was here in the 80s, you would have dug up the landfill and moved it. And I think that's something that needs to be done in the future. So there are lots of things that need to be done, and you're, you're talking about all of them, and they're very important. And they're going to cost you lots and lots and lots and lots of money. I've been doing electrical energy purchasing since the 60s. And, I could, and, and that was in Massachusetts. And you want to talk about a, uh, a cutthroat business that was terrible down there. We used to sue Boston Edison Company every, every other year because of the things that they were doing. And every year we'd win, but, which I thank God for at the time. Uh, we need to be very practical in what you do. You need to get answers to your questions. I think the committee is going to try very, very hard, so as a consultant, to get those answers for you, because they want to do this work as much as we think it needs to be done. And, and better yet, we need to think that your taxes need to go down, not up. I live in Plymouth because I couldn't find a place in Ashland when I moved up here. Do you know what the tax rate in Plymouth is? It's higher than the, the town rate's higher than the school rate. And it's going to go up substantially more because the state keeps on buying property. The state has asked us, you talked about the water system, okay? The state has asked us to look for a new system for water, someplace other than over on the interstate because the state's polluting the system with, 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 uh, with salt. And it's going to get much worse. And I can tell you in Massachusetts it did. One town had to abandon their entire water system because the state polluted it. The state had to buy them a new water system. We don't want to have that stuff happen here. That's just not the way we do things in New England. And I'm a damned old Yankee, I gotta tell you, and I'm as cheap as you know what. I, if, I can, if I can make a dime, you know, go for a buck, I will. And I think these people are working very hard. No, maybe they don't have all the answers yet. And I know they don't, okay? 
I've been doing this for a lot of years, and I've, this is not the first plant I've seen. I was in line to be the executive director and the operator of a plant in Pentecook, and I was the first town to deposit there. I turned the job down only because of the people who were running it. But that plant's a good plant. But it needed to be bought by the city of Concord, not by a private corporation in California who was just sucking that money right out of that, right out of that plant and taking it someplace else. You need to get the benefit from these things, not somebody else. And that's where I'm trying to get to, and I think that's where the board's trying to get to. And I can't, I, I can't disagree with any of that, Fred. My only question was, do you have a plan for all the other stuff that you have already mentioned that we need to look at? Is that part of, is this part of an overall plan? That was my only question. In I my mind, yes. With, with uh, most of what you said, but I still have not heard anything about addressing In, in, in my mind, the yes. The question was asked, what's your long-range capital expenditures program? Mm -hmm. There isn't one. I know there isn't. Okay. I, I know that very well. My capital expenditure plan for the last time I worked for it was over 300 pages. Right, and where's the one for Ashland, Fred? It's not there because, you know what, I don't control that. In the other town I did because the town meeting voted to give me control of it. This town, I can't say a thing about that. It's all in the planning board's docket. No, 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 don't, don't give me that. This is my statue. Separate committee. No, no, no. Separate no, committee. no. All right, all right. Well, we're getting off topic here. Stop. Way off topic. Yeah. Let's get back to the waste energy plan. I'm sorry. <laughs> and, you know, we can have these debates in the pocket lot. Can you explain the revenue bond how it works? Where is the money coming from? Okay. Um, you want to tackle that one? You want to know how the revenue bond works? Excellent. Um, a revenue bond is an instrument used uh, to fund public utilities such as this, to fund a toll bridge, to fund a power plant, any type of municipal thing. So the funds accumulate over time, so you make expenditures, that interest adds to the loan. You pay interest on the interest, yes you do, until a time when you actually begin to make revenue. And then that revenue is assigned to the bondholder, it's the debt service, and then you have the residual minus your expenses, minus your debt service. And, and we have a, a snapshot of that from the overall economic um, draft model that we've given you in year seven. So you can see the revenue, you can see the expenses, you can see the debt service, you can see the residual that you would have. Well, whose money is it? Yeah, I mean, who gives you the money? I mean, I where does the money come from? Well, a renewable energy facility like this may be able to attract what's called angel investors. Those are investors who are not seeking just a return on their money. They're also looking at the societal benefits that a facility like this would provide, again, as the other gentleman was agreeing with me, against landfilling all of this 168,000 tons a year of MSW. So you have, you're creating a net societal benefit by reducing the overall impacts to our environment by doing the facility, and that has some value to them. Um, and they may invest with you as well as other um, entities that are looking for uh, municipal assets. So they want to invest in municipalities. They would be willing to invest with you. I've got a phone call. Anne. Oh. Sure. Hello. Hi. No further questions. Thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. It was left. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. That's what I'm seeing right now. These are tough questions, but we're willing to answer them. Everything's going to be transparent. Thank you. Jeremy. Thank you. You did a really good You guys are doing a really good job. All right. Thank you. Jeremy, unfortunately, also, can we expect the feasibility to go out of Yeah, we need a motion to go out of the way. We need to get out and put numbers on the chairman. Okay, the performer. We're going to get out of the. Okay. Motion to. I'll make a motion to come out of the public hearing. I'll just make a second. Okay. Motion to come out of the public hearing.
Can you hear me? Okay, the motion by me by Mr. Finch, second by Ms. Hartley, to come out of the public, public, the public, the public meeting, portion of this meeting this evening. Anybody understand the question? All in favor, please say aye. Get two more bonds to talk about. Yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not, you just closed the bond here. Oh, no, we'll open it up again. I need to talk to you. All right, I'm mistaken. We got another bond to talk about. So, a motion to disregard that vote. Can you rescind that, that that motion? Yeah, I'll rescind the motion. Can you rescind your second? I've rescinded. The motion has been rescinded and seconded. Let's move on to the next public hearing. We'll move on to the next public hearing. Good. <laughs> I agree. Oh, we, oh, I got two mics. Um, Fred, do we want to rearrange the tables like we did last let's, time so Marissa can come join us? Uh, let's yeah. uh, let's, okay. let's recess for a few minutes. Maybe we can get the noise down in here. Yes. Yes. Can we make it? Yeah. People are quiet. Do we have to vote on that? Or we just do it? We just do it. We, we want to make a, we're, we're going to take a break to get this evening. Break? Just to get oh, those people out. Okay, time for a re well, we, recess. We have a public okay. hearing. Do you want the public is here. You can recess the hearing for a minute. Yeah. Then clean up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You don't have a mic yet. We want to go now. <laughs> Mr. Chair, yes, I believe my we can motion now close to come the back. public hearing after we've, we've, we've finally figured out what date we're okay. going to hold. Okay, we have that motion now to close the public hearing. Yep. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. I'll second. Motion been made by Mr. Finch, second by Ms. Hartley to close the public hearing. All of, any, any opposed? None opposed. Anybody in favor? Aye. aye. Say aye. Thank you. Motion passes. We're out of public public hearing. All right, now, next item on the agenda is meeting with Mike Furter with a water issue. Oh, no, no. Veronica. No. Skipped one. A. Veronica. Oh, meeting with Marana. I'm sorry. Ms. <coughs> Veronica she likes, be, she likes to be called Ronnie. Okay. <laughs> so Ronnie is up next. I'm sorry, Ronnie. I, I guess I thought you were both together, but apparently. Well, we kind of are, but we're next that's okay. That's okay. Over, over. Friendly neighbors. <laughs> he drove me over. Oh, I had his mercy, I guess. <laughs> okay. The car boy. So, um, I don't know. I take this to Fred, and thank yep. you for meeting with me, Fred. I no, not a problem. Um, I Happy have this mask on because my husband is undergoing major surgery. Oh, I'm dear. Trying to, on Friday. That's no fun. No, so I'm trying to keep myself from bringing anything home. Oh, mm -hmm. yes, I agree. Okay, so anyway, I am I know Fred I turned in when I mm -hmm. asked to be on the agenda. Yep. And put a picture of this. Yep. Pretty this. beautiful colored water that shouldn't be there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I just wanted everybody else to see the rest of the selectmen what that we're dealing with. And I don't think that any of you would want to bathe or drink this water or have your children or your grandchildren bathe <coughs> in this water. And this is what we are dealing with over on Brunk Avenue, which uh, feeds off of the Winona piping problem. And so I just wanted to make sure that this is just in the meetings, officially in the meeting minutes, not just hearsay, talking to Bob, or coming up and talking we to got Fred. <laughs> so um, anyway, that's why I'm here. Trying to get an update on uh, what the status is as far as grant money. I know that there's money out there. So I know that there's a deadline of January 29th. And if they don't receive that grant application, then you have to wait until the following July before you can put in for that. So um, also, I don't 
I also put in for an abatement of my water bill until something can be done about this water situation. And um, I did also send that in to um, the town also. So that's why I'm here. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you. Commissioner Met Metcalf, if I, uh, not Met, yeah, Metcalf, right? Metcalf. Yes. Just so I can put it on the record for you so you know. I have spoken in the past week to Senator Shaheen's office, and Senator Maggie Hassan's office, to the uh, regional director, HUD, uh, and they have all said that they would do everything in their power to help us get grant monies to further this project down the line. But we still have to go through all of the, the motions of applying for the grants, and they will be be more than willing to step up and recommend us because of your problem. I made an issue of quality of life for you and your neighbors, and same thing on our Thompson Street. Uh, they have the same problem further up the line that needs to be replaced as well. So uh, we're working on it. It's going to be on the ballot for uh, a bond issue to repair, repair and replace these water lines. And uh, hopefully you get your friends to help us pass this. Uh, we will also search for as many grants as we can to reduce the price as much as we can. But meanwhile, uh, we have to take and go step by step. But we're on it. And we feel for you, we don't have any money in our budget right now to do anything because the, we're almost at the end of the year and everything's been spent. So there's nothing left over to do anything. And besides, we can't do anything without permits. You live, the water line that goes to your house is on state road, needs state approval. That requires all of these, these steps that I talked about. So we're going to be doing it, and we're not letting off the gas. We're, we're moving forward. So what is the status on a grant being sent in before January 29th? Um, my information tells me they're working on the grant. Uh, we had some paperwork come in this week. I haven't seen it yet. I just got a copy of it. I don't know if it's that grant or another one, but it's a grant for, for water and I'm going to look at it. I don't have the up-to-date information on me at this particular time. But I did speak with the engineers that are, that are doing the project for us, that are doing the engineering, and they would promise me that they would have the um, what we need to go forward so we don't miss the deadline. So we of will the, have it. Of the January 29th. Oh, yes. Well, there's not just that grant. There are several grants we're going to be applying for, not just that one. It's complicated, as, as, as I've told you, but uh, we, we're, we're working on it. We're going to do everything we can. It's, we won't leave any stone unturned. So what about um, the abate, an abatement towards the water? I just don't feel that I should be paying the same time. When was, of when was that photograph taken? This was taken October 23rd. Yeah. Uh, has it improved at all since then when Andrew went up there and flushed the lines? When they flushed. Well, this is last week. It was what? Last week. Last week? Yeah. It improves when they flush for yeah. about a day, a day or so. Um, this is just horrible. And I feel like I should not have to be paying the same amount for my water that people that we're not having this problem. So I think some sort of an abatement is warranted. So I, I can't hear what you're saying at this point. I said I, I feel like I should not be paying the same amount for water that people that are not having this problem and are not bathing and washing their clothes and drinking this water and bathing their children and grandchildren in it, that I should have to be paying the same amount that people are not having this issue, and therefore I believe that an abatement is warranted. Questions? I think that's something we're going to need to 
think hard about. Uh, well, obviously, you know, I, un I understand the issue and I understand where she's coming from. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure where we go from here. Fred, have you got any ideas? Well, you've got a couple of choices. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, one is to do nothing, which you probably aren't going to do, uh, because I think you're, you're all concerned about what's going on here. Uh, the other is to give an abatement of a portion or all of the water bill for those people affected. What what has happened in, in uh, other towns if, when this has happened? Well, the towns I've worked in, they usually give an abatement for the entire amount of the water bill each billing period until it subsides. I know that our water department has um, sent out for a brand new type of um, medium to put in the water, which will, in fact, congeal all this and attach it to the pipe so it doesn't go down the pipe, so to speak. It doesn't get to the, the users' homes because it's, it's, it's actually, it almost acts like a, a glue without being glue. It forces the material back up into the water pipe itself. Um, that doesn't serve the long-term problem. Yeah, no, I, <clears throat> I understand that. The, the question right now is how do you want to address the issue of their water that looks uh, kind of like a mud puddle. Uh, if I can use that analogy, because that's what that looks like. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Do we know? And this was taken, like, when I was sitting in this, you know, in the bathtub, letting the water run, and then this is what, obviously, I yep. got out into this picture. Right. And if it were to sit there for several days, it would congeal along the bottom and make a mess, yeah. uh, which you'd have to clean out. Well, and, and, and where I notice also, um, like my dog bowls, yep. when you give them the water, their bowl is all <coughs> yellow, right. like this, after the water is like a rust the color. sediment stays, and the yellow is the, the bowls. Right. Um, there's rust in the system. It's not that the water is not potable, but it, it has a bad coloration, uh, <clears throat> particularly when it's not flush for a while. Uh, it's not harmful. We've already had it tested. We know that. But it certainly isn't very attractive. It's not. And it's hard mentally to believe that it's not nasty for and hurting your body in some way even though yeah, they say that right. the testing is done and mm -hmm. it's not but it's hard for you to wrap around your head that something the, like the this visual that, impact is substantially more than the verbal yeah so do we know how many people are impacted in the two areas you know but we can find out <clears throat> that's what we're going to have to do yeah i think i think we need that figure first and then if we can have a couple of weeks, our next meeting. Actually, you're meeting here next Tuesday. No. Well, actually, you're meeting next Tuesday, but not in this room. Not in this room. Okay. Yeah, that's a different meeting. By by then, we should have the the number of people impacted, and we can. <coughs> we, 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 yeah. yep, right. we hope we can get the accurate number. We can make a yeah. We hope we can make a plan. Right. Is is that acceptable? Yes, but will that make a difference? I mean, if there's well, it, it, a numerous amount, you're going to say, no, we're not going to abate versus if it's just a few. No, it just gives us an idea of how many people we are dealing with. It gives us a chance to plan a little bit. Uh, we, we, need to, we need to plan how we're going to do it. We need some space. We need, we need a week. We need to get the figures. We need to know how many people are impacted, how we're going to handle it. How many people, can you tell me how many people have come forward where, that have made you, or obviously the Thompson Street is, you know, you're aware of the Thompson Street. How, isn't that something you should already know? Have people been complaining? Yes, but we don't know everybody that's on the line. Not everybody's complained. That's what we're trying to ascertain. In fairness, we need to know who's impacted so that we can make the correct decisions. Well, I know I, on, on my street, but there's not that many houses. Right, yeah. But we need to some know of them have wells. Yeah. And some of them have, you know, this 
notices will have to be formed. Let us have to go out. I, I think we can get that information from the water department. Right, exactly. Yeah. Because they've been getting, they, they're the ones who get the calls, and they're the ones who go up and flush the line. So they should have some, some pretty good data on who's been calling and, and what they have to do in order to flush the lines in order to get those people to stop calling, at least for a while. Uh, I think what the board wants to do is they want to be fair to everybody. Well, well and, and if I might add that um, I, me personally too, what concerns me about this is that my husband was very ill with Mercer, which was a terrible blood infection that's, that's that he and this is what I'm bathing him in. Yeah. You know, and I don't want any infection or mm -hmm. anything rust sediment or whatever to, you know, I, he was very seriously ill and Mercer's nothing to fool around with. Yeah. Right. And um, it, it killed his hip <coughs> and he's been immobile basically for almost five months because they had to put cut that bone out, put a temporary spacer in and thank God now the, we believe that the infection is coming out of his body and he'll be having surgery this Friday for total hip, permanent hip replacement, hopefully, which will get him back to the end, you know. So anyway, but this is what I just, yeah. it's very discerning for me. Um, so may I make a comment? Absolutely. Okay. Aside from Ronnie's concerns, and we all, we all realize there's a concern here, uh, whether it's visual, uh, but thank goodness he did the testing, right? And it's within the safety parameters, we assume. Right. So yeah. I believe you in that respect. Um, to me, what it boils down to is at some point, these lines are going to have to be replaced, not only from the visual or health or other concerns or this is probably eating up my hot water heater. You know, I, I replace one every three years, and that's probably well before its time. Is the lines are eventually going to implode or get so decomposed that you're going to have a real issue on your hands? They're, I think they're over 100 years old, right, in that area of the town by the campground. Well, they're not new. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. That's about all. <laughs> um, and you know, the sooner the better because we all have to buy and sell homes, and we certainly don't want this to be an, uh, an issue that Ashland is <clears throat> grappling with year after year, which uh, may deter people moving into the community and deter people from selling and so forth. You know, um, a municipality provides basic services, and that's wastewater and uh, drinking water as far as I'm concerned, and infrastructure, roads, and so mm -hmm. forth. Those are the three top Prior priorities police, in my mind. EMT. Yeah. So, um, you know, Ronnie and I, she's my neighbor, and we've been talking to Fred and Bob and Andy about this for a while. And uh, I, I want to thank the board for listening, and I feel like we're on the right path now. Uh, six months ago, I was somewhat frustrated, but Fred has had an open door concept in his office, and I've been able to go in there from time to time to discuss things with him. And, and I work for the federal government, so I'm trying, you know, if I can, I share resources and potential avenues to um, for grant money. You know, uh, New Hampshire DES is, is one agency, CDFA, CDBG department uh, at the state of Concord is another. You mentioned, you know, Maggie Hassan and Shaheen, you know, tapping into those political benchmarks uh, and agencies at the si same time is, is the best thing you can do. And all we can do is try to get some grant. Uh, it's not going to cover everything, right? We all know that, but at least at least it'll be something to at least to do sections of the town in, in phases maybe, you know. The worst sections and then five years down the road, you're going to have to tackle another area. Mm -hmm. But I can see the effort and I appreciate that uh, and, and that you're, op you're all listening and uh, Hopefully the wheels are spinning and you got the consultants applying for the grants and whoever, uh, and hopefully we can get some money coming in to help us repair and replace some of these lines. Uh, mm -hmm. Short term, uh, as far as flushing and the blowout, it does help a little bit. Uh, and then after a week or so, it kind of goes back to this. This was actually from my hot water here. This, if this was the tap, I think would be more concerned. But this is basically what I get out of the hot water heater. After flushing it for 30 minutes, it's still 
The first 10 minutes are really bad, but this is towards the end of it when it's almost drained out. Um, so I think, you know, short-term solutions, yep, keep on top of that, and the challenge is long-term. Mm -hmm. But I know Fred mentioned that uh, something about a bond or loans, and, and that's, that's the way to go, but uh, it's frustrating because I know the town doesn't have much money, uh, but we have real problems and real decisions to make. Well, if I may, the thing that concerns me is that, um, you know, as far as a bond, these people that sat here tonight would have to vote on a bond, and if it doesn't affect them, are they going to even care? I mean, a lot of them have wells, so it doesn't affect them. They could care less because they don't have the city water and sewer, um, and I think they probably outnumber the city and water people. Then you've got all these uh, renters that could care less, you know, as long as their landlord takes care of their issues. And so, um, you know, what's the alternative? If you can't I don't think get there's any rent. alternatives. There's no choices. That they, the bond needs to be approved because it's a quality of life issue, and if they don't don't support the bond, they'll end up in court. In the court, will tell I us hope, to do it. I and hope so. Provide us the money to do it. I would love everyone that comes to vote to see this and to see would you want to be, you know, your family to have to mm -hmm. put up with this. And not like Mike was saying. You know, when you get ready to sell your property, you know, you have to divulge this. You may oh, not sure. be able to even sell your home because yeah. of this, you know. And um, I, I had no idea when I purchased my property that this was even going to exist. This has only been in the last couple of years that it has gotten this bad. So, um, you know, I don't think it's going away. No, it's not. Until the pipes are replaced, it will only get worse. We're talking uh, an estimated cost of $6.2 million on the bond. Well, less, whatever, less whatever aid we can get. Right. So Just just for that section of the town, the Thompson, Winona yep. area? All the areas we've been talking about, yes. Yeah. Yep. But I can say it's a lot less than 135 million that you're probably <laughs> <laughs> be sure to vote for that because that'll help us pay for it. Yeah. I, I think what we need is a long range program to have our own printing press. <laughs> With the right so you know Please. the yeah, Thompson plates. Street project has been on radar for a while and it was planned two years out from now. It was it was I think tell me if I'm not Correct. Uh, the Thompson Street water extension was planned for 2025? Yep. Yeah. That's my understanding. Yes. I'm asking Craig. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He's not the guy water superintendent. <laughs> at, at the time, we had a, uh, <clears throat> a long term bond that was going to come, that would be paid off at that time. Yeah, it was a little less money then, wasn't it? Yeah, well, we'll yeah. Just what's well, happened $1. is. $1.2 million to yeah. replace that last year. What people did talk about tonight, but this other thing is, if you wait another year, you can almost double the price again, and then it's out of out of reach. But at any rate, um, uh, the Toronto Street project has been on the radar, and it was planned for for next year, not 24 but 25, and because it's doing the same thing it's doing at your house, we got to do that one too as well. It's just as bad. We're on it. That's what I can tell you. We're on it. I'm spending a lot of time on it. You know, I got a lot of positive information and a lot of positive uh, vibes from the, both the senators and the people at HUD. Said that they will do all they can to help us, but we have to. We have to do the, the jumps. We have to do check all the boxes. We have to do the permits. We have to. We have to get permission from the town to do the project. All those things. So. And I hope that the board stays the same and you run again and you get reelected because uh, I don't want to come down here next year with all new people and have to redo this all over again. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, I got a job to do too, you know, and I don't want to be coming bothering Fred every every week. And, and uh, you know, hopefully, you know, we had our talk and that'll be it for a while. So.
So this is what retirement looks like. I agree. <laughs> I agree. We need to get numbers and go forward with the bonds, but I don't think it should matter how many people we find out need this to wait for the abatement. Well, before we make before we make a dis before we make an announcement, and that's what we would be doing tonight. We yeah. need to know how many. Um, and who? So we, and we, who? we need to know. So they don't just come in and say, so, yes. "Oh, I live on that right. street." Yes. We need the impact. Yeah. We we need. Yeah. You know who they are and just do it. Right. Are we just <clears throat> will the sewer department, water sewer department, be able to say it's these houses up to this point? Will they be able to give us an exact, or just the people who have called in? Probably just the people who have called in. I so would. if people don't complain. But there's still got water that like you that? Could, you could take this house on Thompson Street complains. This house never has. Everybody from here that has complained is this way on Thompson Street. You could assume from that that everybody <coughs> is down affected by that down the line. So you're going to. Because the water only feeds from one direction. Right, but yeah. if each and every one of those people haven't called and complained. Are they still going to get the abatement? Doesn't mean they're having the problem. Is the point? That's you right. We need to verify it, so you know. We need to doing. verify. Or they might be having a problem. They don't even. They're not even aware of it. Yeah. Well, I mean, when it comes out of the faucet, it isn't like you can. And if they're not filling a tub, they're having a you, shower. You, it looks fine when it comes out of the faucet. Really, yeah. you know. Right. Sometimes, yeah. and it, it, it sometimes it doesn't. And, and the I, toilet is where you can see the, yeah. well, the, the murky. The bathtub is the worst for me. When you're taking a bath or a shower, you can actually see when you're showering the yellow coming down. When the bath, obviously, when you fill it up, that's what it looks like. Um, in my <coughs> home, I don't, um, on the kitchen sink, we have put a filter on that sink for drinking, you know, but I, it's hard to put filters on every faucet in your yep. house. Um, it's costly, and I don't feel that I should have to incur the expense to have a, somebody come out and see about putting a filtering system on the main line, which would take care of the whole house. Um, one of my neighbors actually had to do that to a very costly fee because they just couldn't take right. it. Right. My daughter's on Thompson Street, and that's what she had to do because she's yeah. got kids. and. Yeah. Just, you know, How often yeah. does she have changes? I mean, there, there's people affected on uh, I would say Bronte Avenue. Months. I mean, we're all affected on Bronte months. Avenue. I don't know how I far down. Uh, Dean was speaking mm -hmm. earlier tonight. He's like kind of the last house on Bronte Avenue. Uh, but they, I know, uh, well, I know two neighbors that have it a lot worse than this, but they, they just don't, they don't speak up or really. Right say anything and they just when I tell them we're, we're going to the town hall meeting they're like oh well good luck you know and you that's know their, that's their problem they don't want to speak up then that's their decision so I we think should we'll be, be able, able to isolate, isolate the areas, areas. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Veronica can I have your phone number please um Wait, wait, wait. No, wait. no we're on. We're, no, we're, we're on. on TV. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no we're on TV. <laughs> Just give it to me after after the, after yeah. the meeting. After we close the part of the meeting. There you go. Right oh, there. right here. Yeah. Never mind. I got it. <laughs> Whoa. I just want to add it to my list of people that I'm talking to on this issue. Good point. It's been a long day. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. We're gonna. Yep. Thank you so you much. We'll be in touch. We'll be in touch. I have five no. bottles sitting down at the town hall. I mean, you might mistake it for green tea. That'll be good. Ooh. Green tea looks like that. I'll never get drunk. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for listening. Yep. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate Have a good night. Have a good night. Yeah. Yeah. Try telephone number. Forget what we have. Telephone number. That would have been nice. Okay. Next issue. Well, that takes care of Michael Trump also. So that takes care of A and B. <coughs> ah. mm -hmm. uh, approval of the updated default budget. 
we've all received a copy of that. There were some minor changes that needed to be made so that uh, it could be in conformance with the statutory requirements. And uh, we handed those out some time ago. Uh, we would like you to approve them so that when we go to the budget committee for the public hearing, uh, we give them the right information. Make a motion that we approve the default budget figure of three million two hundred and eighty-seven thousand dollars. Yeah, two three million two hundred and eighty-seven thousand eighty-one dollars. Correct. <laughs> All second. Thank you. Made Small second. numbers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Any discussion on that? I think we've all looked at it. We all have a copy. Mm -hmm. uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Motion passes. Question of ambulance service funding. As you know, we have cut that appropriation to zero. Uh, I think you probably ought to think about that between now and your meeting next Tuesday. <clears throat> um, in case, and the ambulance will be here in probably April. I've got my fingers crossed. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but it will be coming, and we just don't exactly know when, and it's the same problem with uh, materials and so on and so forth on the other end. Um, but you need to fund things. And we have a regular fire department budget, which is very small. <clears throat> so I, I, I guess my question or my concern would be that the board think about whether or not the sixty or seventy thousand dollars that we are not funding, which was this current year that we're paying, should you carry that forward into next year with knowing no uh, increased impact in the tax rate, so you can fund costs and expenses if our, our ambulance people are going to have to be called in, because we don't get a penny from Blue Cross Blue Shield or any other insurance agent; it all goes to Plymouth. They collect all the money because they're the ones who take the people to the hospital. We only prepare them. So we don't get reimbursed for any of that expense. Um, if we were to take the money, just, just something to think about. If we were to take the money that we had appropriated last year for this uh, and just put that aside to pay for expenses that are incurred by the town, if we are running the ambulance service, that would... Uh, go a long ways to helping people. That's correct. Now, we did discuss this at a meeting. We did. We did make a decision. Yes. Yeah. What was the number? Uh, off the top of my head, I don't remember. But I, I believe it was 60 some thousand dollars a year. I get, think about it for next meeting, because you're going to meet next Tuesday mm -hmm. in, order to, in order to do the, uh, uh, the bond issues for the, the, the hearing for the bond issues for the sewer. That would be a good time to give you a week to think about it uh, as to what you want to have, and I'll, I'll send you all an email as to how much money we spent last year. Okay. That I don't happen to have my appropriation schedule with me. So. Well, are we talking about the ambulance contract? Yeah. Well, the ambulance contract, we have 40000 and change in the budget for it because that's the remainder of this contract till June 30. No, what was it for the whole year? Well, that's already happened. No, no. If we were going to do it for next year, what was the cost for the whole year? It was about $250,000, or no. $230,000. No, not, not the new bill they sent us, the, the old, old one. one. Right, so it's 40000 for this year, double that. So it would be about an 80, it's like $81,000 $80, okay. for the ambulance contract. Yeah, if it didn't change. If it didn't change, Okay. right. That's my point. So you, you've got some money you can think about. Right now, there's zero in there. Right. Even if you only put half that money in, 
uh, that would pay for. Or is this money going to come from, from the taxpayers? Is that it's, the same? It already comes from the taxpayers. Okay. No, no, but but the budget's already been somewhat decided. So this is going to be another item item in the budget. Yep. So you're going to add to it. Yeah. You, your question is whether or not you're going to have ambulance service. No, no, I, I get that. I'm just I'm talking about the finance part of it. Yeah. Well, that and goes. I don't go think together. any of us are, are, are trying to take away the ambulance service. If anything, we want to make sure it gets fully funded. Right. But not at the rate of a quarter of a million dollars. And well, may I remind you the Budget Committee is voting on the budget on Thursday? Uh, yeah, I know. This Thursday. Uh, are See, they aware of this? You get, you get, well, they're aware we haven't funded anything. Hmm. You get two chances at this. You can either do it with the Budget Committee at their meeting on Thursday because you've done something on Tuesday. Okay. Or you can go to the deliberative session and amend it. Okay, well, yeah. let's do that. Let's, let's do the, the form and not the, this Thursday, not the right? Their meeting is this Thursday, the 11th. Yeah. You are not meeting until the 16th. Right. So if you don't make a decision at this meeting. You're going you're gonna to try to amend it at the deliberative session. Okay. Well, let's do it then. Is 60K enough? 60K in round figures. Assuming that we take the ambulance service like we plan on taking it, we should start getting we should start getting money from the insurance carriers. Yes, right now that money is all taken by the. Uh, yes, I, I, yeah. I understand that the clinic gets it all. Right. In addition to what's paying them, they get all the money to boot. That's correct. So, if we put sixty thousand dollars in this line, so that the ambulance is fully funded for their services, will that get us through the year? As we as we start to take over after we get through with Plymouth, it will help along with money that comes in from the I don't insurance want to get companies. Help! I want to know if it's enough. There's no way of knowing that until we actually do it. Okay. So you think 60k is enough? I think that's what we've been contributing for the last couple of years. I think that's it. Uh, we will have better knowledge if we start doing the work, as opposed to having somebody else do it and not give us the facts. Okay. So this is a number that we've been using on a regular basis and yep. it's been working. This is for the supplies I'm assuming that they use when they go out on the calls. No? Well, what is this service uh, service funding? This pays for the employees, it pays, pay, pays for the materials. Right. Yeah. Well, that's what I asked. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Okay, last year we voted $76,000 for the ambulance. So if that's the case, then it needs to be that. We can't, we can't shut, we can't shut funders. No, but we, you have to remember that we haven't been getting any of the revenues in for right. time. And they are getting $40,000 in their budget this year. Which is obligated to Plymouth. Which is obligated to Plymouth. They're in a fiscal year, we're in a calendar year. Okay. So it, it's a little... Right, so prior tipsy. year is two payments of 2022 contract to 2023 and then two payments of 2023 to 2024 so that's so prior would it years, be prudent to use last year's voted figure of seventy six thousand dollars that that would be in round figures yes i think that would be a good starting point and well, that's the question i was asking yeah. we have enough in here so 60 is not enough and it has to be 76 then that's what it should be yep this is a life, life or death issue. Oh yeah. Okay. Seventy-six thousand. So I'll make a motion that we put seventy-six thousand dollars into the budget for the ambulance. I'll second that. May I ask to clarify? Go ahead. Okay. Um, so seventy-six thousand total in that line, or in addition to? In addition to. Because so I know we have the forty thousand plus right. the seventy-six. Okay. It was still obligated to put off for right. the rest of the year. Okay, yeah. just clear. That's the problem. Yep. Any other discussion on this? No other discussion. Call the vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. The motion passes unanimously. Okay. Public works warrant articles. Okay. Uh, I we, have a, we have a new truck. Go ahead. Yeah. We need a new truck. I've been thinking about this one. <laughs> I know. Okay. So, Craig. Come on, Craig. Come on up here. No, I was watching over here. Hot seat. 
Okay. Um, so, you want my cl crutch to beat him with? No, I don't think that's necessary. You're the person in charge of him. You can go so. ahead if you want. Um, <laughs> Remember the chief of police is back there. So I think we need to clarify when Craig came and asked for your own camera. Yeah. <laughs> um, to clarify, if Craig's getting two warrant articles, uh, one for his original appropriation to the Public Works Capital Reserve Fund for $25,000, right. and then a separate warrant article for the truck. For the truck, which was $200,522. I don't know. With $90,000 to come from Capital Reserve Fund, but you were right. adding all of it to the Capital Reserve Fund. So we just need to clarify if it's two articles or if it's one article. So what we normally do is put twenty-five thousand every year in a capital reserve. That's right. a separate warrant article. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then I, we need to have some way to pay for this new truck. We're going to take ninety thousand out of the existing capital reserve to pay down a portion of that truck. And I think it was ninety. Yeah, and we were going to add in. I think it was two hundred thousand and five twenty-two. <coughs> so right now there's a little over a hundred thousand in the capital reserve account. It was my understanding when we talked about it that it was going to be two Warren articles. That's what I thought as well, I so I wanted so to clarify. I think it needs to be. Yeah. Yeah. Then yeah. One, it's confusing If otherwise. the truck fails, yes. you yeah. still would hopefully get right. the regular right. appropriation. Correct. Right. right. And I think that's all we needed, right, friend? That's it. That's then all we'll we write need. Them. Yep. Right. Let's not go any further with something we don't need. What are we going forward with? I didn't catch that. We're going to go with the forward with two warrant articles. Oh, yes. two warrant articles. Yeah. Two warrant articles. One for the, the capital reserve and one for the truck. Yeah, yes. you got it. That makes sense. Yep. Uh, I think I mentioned that one time in the office. Yes, you did, but we need the vote of the board. Okay. Um, bandstand. I hate putting this on the, bar, on the warrant, but it has to be done. Well, something's got to be done with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, the question has been, has been raised as to whether or not it could be picked up and moved. I think it's probably old enough and it's probably not built with the right materials that that may be a problem. It may, in fact, disintegrate. No, I, I I remember we spoke about this, and yes, we, get, we, we got some estimates. I, I think <clears throat> Mike got some estimates of what it would cost to move it, whether we moved it somewhere within the park or we moved it somewhere else. Yep. And if you move it somewhere else, it's so big that you have to have state police come in remove, and then fire the electric companies come and remove the wires and telephone companies and the cable yep. company, whatever. All the wires have to be removed because you can't go down the road ripping the wires down. So... <laughs> Well, you've uh, got to cut the thing in half and do it two, two truckloads. The question came whether or not the, the building was stable enough to be moved yes. without, without falling apart. Yeah. And my suggestion was, if we're going to spend all this money, let's build a new one. It made sense to me. That's what I said. And I mean, yeah, how old is that thing? Nobody knows. Well, it was it's more than a week. It was the 1950s. 50s. Yeah. Milton Grain building. Thank you, David. Oh, 80, oh, say 80, 80 years old, maybe? Well, it has been moved before. It was built for uh, in the Legion property, when mm -hmm. it was the Legion property originally, and then they moved it down to Walmart. Mm -hmm. Well, the other thing, too, is that if we move it to a new location, even if it was one foot, we would have to make it ADA compliant as well. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to pay to move it, build one, build one correctly with the ADA compliance on a location where you want it, because I'm not sure we want it in the middle of the ball field, that's for sure. No, not really. So Pitcher's mound. Hmm? Pitcher's mound. So, Craig, <laughs> I hate to ask you this, but how much to replace it? Oh, I don't know. Uh, Wait a minute. One of, the, one, of the one of the movers had actually suggested that it would be cheaper to build a new one. Yeah. Then to move it. Right. Right. Because they were essentially going to have to take the top off anyway, transport the roof separate from the floor. Right. And then reassemble it. And it was he, he thought it would be cheaper to build a new one than it would be 
to move it. Well, the question is, we need to know how much money to ask for, and, and for for you to take it apart. Nothing. I mean, just our time. So no cost to the town. Well, we could put one of our containers down there and, and demolish it. You know, we could take measurements of it first and yeah. build a replica someone down the road. Maybe you can form a committee to raise funds for it. Right. That, that would make sense. That's what happened last time, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're being forced into this by no pond people. Yeah. And we we have no choice. I mean, we put them off till springtime, but they're not going to wait beyond that. No, they're not. So, uh, if we're going to do what you're suggesting, then we don't need a warrant article. Because if you raise funds separately, like they did to fix the cover oh, no, bridge. I think it donations vote. Yeah. yeah. I, I bet you it was donated by the people and they got I'm donations sure. for the lumber and they built it. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. we could do that again. Pretty sure the labor was probably donated too. Yeah, mm -hmm. unlikely. Look what they raised for the covered bridge in only a year. It was a lot of money. Yes. So I think Something like $30,000, right, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a lot. Like, yep. Maybe All if right. you approach those okay. people and I they know how to raise money, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Those people are residents on the Swan River. They had a different view. Yeah. Actually, yeah. they were non-residents. Right. They were summer residents. Yeah. Those people are not residents. The thing is, is we don't yeah. know you know, what it'll cost to build a new one, and we're coming down to crunch time for warrants. But we do know we have to move it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we have no choice. Yeah, probably will disintegrate. Not anything we want to do, that's for sure. <clears throat> okay. So no warrant on it? No. Okay. Um, it, does everybody agree? Yes, I agree. You need to decide on a waste of energy warrant article for town meeting. <clears throat> well, I prepared one, and everybody's got a copy of it. Uh, and, and nothing, not, I'm not going to say anything derogatory about Fred's work. He put a lot of time into building this one. The problem with this one, and the attorneys even said so, is that it's too lengthy. And people went on and stand it. I think he's went back to height. No, no, that's not what I did. Um, so they suggested some some other language, but I put some of Fred's language in there as well. It says that there would be no cost to the taxpayer. Or the, but the, not that, not that. I put down that the, if I can find it, I don't think. No, I don't think so. <clears throat> So I put in the, the uh, this is the one I put together. Yeah. I'll just read it out. Shall the town of Ashland vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $135 million for the purpose of designing, permitting, and constructing a 12 megawatt town-owned waste energy facility and to authorize the insurance of not more than $135 million of bonds or notes accordance with the provisions of the Municipal Finance Act, RSA 33-6, small b, which said bonds to be conditioned on the first payments to be made following the operation of the waste to energy facility. That was Fred's language. And to authorize the Board of Selectmen to issue and negotiate such bonds and notes and determine, now this is not the one I had, I, I had to put in the town treasurer. This is not the latest one. Um, so it will read to authorize the Board of Selectmen and the Town Treasurer to apply for and contact for and obtain and expend any federal, state, or other available grants, aid, or funds towards the project, and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to take any and all actions to pass any other vote required to carry out the project. There's a couple of spelling areas in here couple of typos. But that's what the, the warrant would say. Um, it's short. It, it says what we wanted to say. It says that you know, you're not going to be any cost to the town until it's operational. 
and we can go out and apply for all the bonds and and the grants available to us to get this thing done. And obviously, if the state and the, and the federal regulators are interested in this project, they will they will put some money into it. If they don't give us money, then they don't want it. So if they want it, they're going to give us money. Well, this is a, they're looking to get rid of money. Yeah. They, well, they give it to us. It also requires a three-fifths vote. Yeah, by statute. Yeah. By statute, right. So yeah. what I'm hearing tonight mirrors my reflections, my, my thoughts. I'm being asked to vote on something that I have no information on. I don't have my feasibility study. I don't, I don't have any of the information that I need to make an educated vote. I really don't see that we need a bond. I think we need to put this off a year and get everybody the figures that they need, including me. That's my feelings. Um, it, you know, it, it, it's up to the board. We're the board. I, I just think we're rushing. I think we need to slow down, let the figures get out, let the facts get out, then next year go after it. That's that's my feeling. Would I like to comment on that a little bit? Um, Charlie. I, there's a lot true in what you said, um, but there is something involved here that I really didn't hear discussed um, that makes me more confident in, in what we're trying to do. And that's, we're going to borrow, we're asking to borrow $135 million. Now, it really doesn't matter if this board approves it. It really doesn't matter if the town approves it, because that doesn't get us $135 million. Somebody's got to put the money up. And similar to applying for a mortgage or yeah, asking you know for personal loan, the people who provide the money, in this case the, the bond market, most likely bonding agents, they are going to scrutinize this project very stringently, much more stringently than any of us would know how to do. And quite frankly, if it, it turns out that it doesn't pass muster, we're not going to get the money. Now there. The work that I see is on day, the first time we ask for the money, my, my sense is they, they throw us out of the room, okay? Or hopefully there'll be a constructive dialogue where they say, hey guys, you gotta come up with grants, okay? You, you, you've gotta get these permits or pass these tests. There's gonna be a, a whole bunch of hoops we've gotta jump through and they're gonna take time. I, I don't see ever, getting a dollar of this money for over a year, maybe 18 months or so, but by the time we jump through all those hoops. And, and, and so, Andy, I mean, your, your caution is, is well taken, but I, I think you have to appreciate that that money is down the road, and, and there's going to be a lot of work done by the Waste Energy Committee, by this board, before we see dollar one. So on that basis, I, I would, you know, ask the board to understand that uh, this is just a step in the process and, and we need to start it sooner rather than later because it's a big process. So part of our process has always been we get our feasibility study, then we go after our design, then we go after the money to build it. You're putting all three of them right in the same spot. I haven't seen the feasibility study. But I we, can't vote for it. If we don't do those things and we don't do them successfully, you don't have to worry about it. We won't get the money. You don't and have we, to worry we, about we, it. I'm not going to vote for it. Okay. If we do all those things, then we take too much time. Uh, and, yeah. and time is of the essence because this is a long process. We need to start it. I know it's a long process, but we still have to follow procedure. Oh, so very normal, normal procedure. Yeah. Just so you know, 
to build this plant before COVID would have been about $70 million. It's doubled in price in three oh, yeah. years. You I'm, wait I'm another year, it's going to go up another 20, 30 percent. You know, and it'll get to the point where it's very difficult. At to, least we'll dot our I's and cross oh, our yeah, T's and like, do it by the book. But we may miss the like opportunity. Like Charlie says, uh, the, you're not going to get the, you know, you're, you're not at the, the end of the game, you're at the beginning of the game. You're not going to get the money. And these guys will scrutinize everything. And the engineering firm that's doing the work, that's doing the bond, the bond request, and going out there and getting the, the people that do the tipping fees, they're doing all that work for us. If they don't do their job, the money won't be available. It's that simple. Uh, but in, in the, the problem we have is we only get once a year to, to decide on it. Yeah. Yep. And I think it should be next year. <clears throat> I wrote, the, I wrote the bond article, the warrant article, whatever, whatever you want to call it, this piece of paper, uh, the way I wrote it so that the board would have and the town would have maximum ability to move cash around when it's necessary. One of the things that you don't have in, in a short proposal warrant article is all the gobbledygook you need to borrow in anticipation of the grants that you receive. Now, you get a federal grant. And, and, I, and I know the chairman is very well aware of this, or even a state grant for that matter of fact, and it takes time for them to authorize the money to come to you. In the meantime, you need to have the money in order to do the work. So uh, we don't have a provision in here for us to borrow in anticipation of those grants. I put that in because I knew that's going to be a problem. It, it always is. Uh, I hope we got $135 million just because we looked at the piece of paper. I mean, but I, I know that's not going to happen. There are a lot of things in here that need to be here. Uh, but you don't need to do them because you can always come back the following year and have to wait a year to get the work done. The federal and state governments have not made this an easy process. But we need to do something. This is an opportunity where we don't have to vote on whether it goes forward or does not. We need to have, we just need to put this out there to see if we can make it go forward. And the, the final decision really doesn't come from us, it comes from the bond market. And so there is really no reason to delay that process because we're just going to get to the same conclusion or we're going to get there sooner. Yep. The sooner the better, that not that what they say? And in this case, <coughs> it, it sooner is, is essential. And the, the risk, you know, I, I think, you know, there was a lot of people tonight talking about risks and bankruptcy and whatnot. Well, if we don't mitigate those risks and, and, and we go forward and this plan is incomplete in any way, you don't have, we don't have to worry about it because we're not going to get the money, so we're not going to go bankrupt. And if we do get the money, then it, it's an endorsement, okay, by the bond market, by the people who are putting up the money, saying, you know, you, you guys you guys put together a good plan, it's going to be worthwhile, we're all going to make money, you guys are going to make money, and we're going to make money giving you the bonds. So it, it, it's just not the typical type of thing, Andy, that, that we deal with. Um, all, all we're doing is putting it forward. We're not making a decision here. No, but I'd like to, I'd like to, if we're going to put it forward, we need to have an article put in the warrant. There's no yes. question about that. Yes, we do. <clears throat> and we need to do it tonight. Well, you need to do it at least by next Tomorrow. Tuesday night, but uh, before you close the warrant. But you're going to have to present it to the budget committee because otherwise they can't vote on it. They're meeting Thursday, we're meeting on Tuesday. No, they're meeting this Thursday. Thursday. Oh, we're this meeting Thursday. Thursday. So oh, we need to and we're meeting make next Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. Tonight. Not good. Yeah. Okay. They they can always hold a second hearing. That's yeah. not the problem. The yeah. problem is, will they? Yeah. Well, it, that is the problem. Yeah. <laughs> they may not. <laughs> so has legal looked at this at all? 
Oh yeah, the lawyer hates it. <laughs> Why? Probably a good. It's too long. It's too complicated. Um, I put everything in there except the kitchen sink, and I actually cut half a page out of it. Not not to diminish Bob's effort because I I think his is concise and, and to the point. I didn't write it. The boys did. I just put Fred's language in there. No, no. Sure that, right. yeah. Well, but. My, my sense of, of Fred's is when you're asking for $135 million, I, I think you want to take a page on the, on the, on the warrant article, and it, 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 no, it has some gravitas you, to you it. You prepare a report to give to the people. It has all the information instead of putting it on the warrant article. Um, three things about that. One, people don't want to sit in the voting booth for an hour reading all the warrant articles. They look at the modern lines and they just vote. Oh. <coughs> it costs money to print all those extra pages of warrant articles. The printing cost is, goes up exponentially. Uh, I can't remember what the third one was, but uh, I just it's short, concise, and we should. If you're going to go forward, you need to provide some kind of some kind of report to the people that explains everything that warrant article would have explained. That's another and put it in, in, in language that, that, that the layman can understand. Not, everybody's not an engineer. I'm not an engineer. I don't have, I understand half the stuff that they're talking about. So, um, right. if the fortunately, we hired a good engineering company. If the shorter warrant article comes with a report, then I, I don't have any objection to that. I, I, I think it needs something to highlight its significance and make it stand out from you know, the, the warrant articles that are of a, a lesser I'm nature. more than happy to write the report if the, the, the which the energy committee provides me the report. Okay. In other words, I can put it into a, yep. into a, into a form that looks pretty and, and attracts people, you know, put some colored pictures in it of what the plant looks like and, and not make them understand what, what we're asking and what it does. And, and that would be available. And the safeguards that are put in there, that are all the safeguards we talked about. Okay. Uh, I, so, uh, I, I'm okay with that. If, I think the Waste Energy Committee would do that. I, I just don't know what else. I mean, this town, we've been trying to find ways to develop some resources for this town for three years. And this is the best thing we came up with. Um, we're still loggerheads with the, with, the, with the hydro plant. And we get this guy over here with this other hydro plant causing us all kinds of grief. We get the mill pond, we get water lines, we got all kinds of things going on. We don't have any resources other than taxes. It appears okay. that if you, if you draw a financial line forward. All right. All right. Well, anyway, Ann wants to talk. Let Ann want to speak. Okay. So if we vote for this or we put it in, it goes through, and the town does not three-fifths vote to it. It's dead. It's dead. Mm -hmm. Then this whole project we've been working on forever and a day is because we at least a year because we rushed it. Yeah. yeah, we don't have permission any further. I I have a slightly different question. <clears throat> Fred, you said that if we use the short one, yeah, that if it goes through then we wouldn't have the ability to move monies around the way that we would need to until the bonds came through I, I or think the grants came it, through. My comment was that you don't have any authority to borrow in anticipation of the granted of the grant that's been given to you. Thank you okay. for, yes, rephrasing. So that means that you... If, if you get a grant from the federal government, let's say they want to give you 90% of the cost, okay, which <coughs> they could. I mean, this is a great idea, all right? Uh, and you don't have the authority to borrow in anticipation of that grant, the grant might not come for two years, in which case you get no money. So that would be the difference between the long one and the short one? Well, no, there's a lot of differences. Well, I, I'm, I'm just I, trying I, to boil it yeah. down, Fred, so we can... That's one of the things I think which is, which is very important. You've got to have the dough, no yeah. matter how you look at it, okay? Um, you will be back. All the things that I put in the warrant article, you'll be back in year two and three to finish those, mm -hmm. just simply because you need to have them. Mm -hmm. That's the way the government works now. 
and I think it's a lousy way, but that's the way they work. You got to have more paper out there. The county's got liver pills, and I, I don't like that idea. But that's what we've been forced to do. I mean, I used to write a, 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 a hundred million dollar bond issue for a sewer on an article that long, three four lines. Okay, now it takes two or three pages, right. just simply because of all the requirements that they've legislated. And, and that's why I spent so much time on this, to try to say, let's do it once and do it right and not have to come back. But we can come back, there's nothing stopping us from doing that. There are just certain things that you have to know you can't do. What if we do come back and it gets voted down? You're up the creek without a canoe or a paddle. So you've got to, you've got to turn all the money back? You're not going to have any money. Okay. If you have to do something, okay, and let's say you go out and float the bond, and, and Joe Blow's bonding company comes to you and says, hey, that's a great idea, we're going to give you $2 billion to do this project, all right? And, uh, but you don't have authority to do this and that and the other thing, so you, we'll have to wait for the next town meeting. Okay. And if it doesn't pass the next town meeting, you get zero because the, the bond goes away. Now, you don't have to borrow the bond until you're ready to do the work. That's what's important. I mean, the bond doesn't go away. You've got authority. Um, and that, that authority goes on for two or three years. It just doesn't evaporate the day after the town meeting. Well, the example is we got a $5 million bond for the sewer, and we haven't touched it yet. We haven't spent any money out of it. We've, we've actually appropriated the money. So, um, we, we've done everything we need to do to appropriate, right. save ourselves the dough. Right, okay? right, exactly. Um, and there are different things to do with different articles. That's all. And you can come back and do add-on things anytime you want. I just adopted the process of I like to do it all at once. <laughs> so my concern is all this work has been done but there's still obviously a lot more that needs to be done for the people to get the information they want. Oh yeah. So this is, um, my guess is it's not going to pass three fifths, and then it's just dead, and we are not authorized to do any more work on it. So that puts us more than just a year behind. Well, I think you can you can still work on the project. You can't spend any money on it because the town hasn't approved it, but you can still work on the project. Provided your consultants are willing to work on it for no, no Right, money. for nothing. So yeah, right. I think the Warren article we wrote last year says we come back and make a report to the people. That's it. And you're doing that with the Warren article. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is there any way... I see an opportunity and I don't want to see it go away. Nobody does, but people don't have all the facts that they need. Well, you're seeing a thumbnail of, of the people in town that are opposed to it. Right. And I can probably explain to you why, but... Uh, oh, I, I get it, but I can also tell you how many people in town are going to sit there and read this whole thing. Well, I, I, I agree with that. It's uh, hard to read it all, so it's up to us to sell the thing before they read it. Is it possible, but we've got a month and a half? No, we, don't no, have we, have to do, sure. we have to make the choice tonight. Right, one but I mean to, to get the information. Oh, yeah. Oh, all yeah. we have is a month and a half. you got to do it before they vote on it. Right. Yeah. It's going to all be together, or it's a definite no. Well, that's I, I, okay, it's not a definite no. I would vote no. That's why we have the committee, because the job of that committee from now until the vote is to get information out to the, to the public. Yeah. And we are, or well, that committee, it's a chaired by Alan Silly and vice chaired by, by Craig Moore, um, they are committed to whatever information becomes available. Uh, the, the engineers are working continuously through this period of time to generate the information that we're going to need. And, and there'll be f more public meetings uh, where we're at three, possibly four, uh, going forward between now and the vote. So I, I think, and that, that committee has a really good understanding of, of 
what has to happen. We, we know we're on a tight timeline. We know we need to get more information out, and I think they're committed to doing it. Is there any way possible for us to, I know it would be expensive, but to have a meeting in, say, five months when we have more information? Oh, sure. As far as a special town meeting is concerned? Yeah. you got to get a court order. It's got to be something that's an emergency that hasn't been thought of, hasn't been uh, proposed. Uh, it's very difficult. The Superior Court would have to agree it's going to come before the town meeting. And you're going to go through all the same processes you go through for a regular town meeting. Because we're an SB2 town. It gets very complicated. The last time I tried one of these was when I was down in Hampton. And we had an emergency that came in June, and we needed a lot of money, and we had it in the unassigned fund balance. And the Department of Revenue said, you can't use a penny of that until you've expended your entire budget. Then you can come for a special town meeting, and we won't oppose it. That's six months' worth of money that had spent before you get a penny and even get to a town meeting. <clears throat> That's the problem with SB2. It's designed not to allow you to have a town meeting unless it's an actual genuine emergency. So let me ask this question because we're, we're going in circles right at the moment. Yeah. Does this board still feel as though this is a worthy project to move forward? This is yes definitely, no? this is definitely a worthy project to okay. move forward. Okay. However, However, we're moving too fast. No. Well, it's not. The you haven't got your information out. Well, I know. We need something to continue. And but I'm afraid if they vote no, then we're. It's hard to overcome a no vote. Right. That's right. <clears throat> Particularly a three fifths no vote. Right. We have to have a warrant article yeah. to move forward. That's correct. So, what Absolutely are we going to do? Correct. This is what the question is tonight. And we're up against the deadline. On anything we can to get this thing prepared. Uh, yep. Craig spent two days writing the other one, <laughs> uh, trying to put everything in and explain it. Bob, may I ask Craig a question? Yes, please. <laughs> Craig. Yes. How much ballparking? Totally putting you on the spot, so I apologize yep. in advance. Would the feasibility project? Need, would you need to do that? I think I, I did ask that to Germany. He said upwards of a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. <coughs> Which so, you'd have to bond to raise the money. I mean, you'd have to. I understand. But he he mentioned that on, that's a quote that he said. He said upwards of a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. If we just worked on this for another year. Excellent. That's addition to the work we have. I think we're thirty-six thousand dollars under the money we've already spent. So if we did up to one hundred and fifty, that would cover what we needed for well, now. That would probably cover, but I, I understand that yeah, things yeah, wiggle around. Yeah, yeah. Got it. It's been my experience with major projects like this that if in a period of time with, you know, maybe not all the information, but with a substantial amount of information, if the town votes it down, they would vote it down a year later also when they've had more time to be frightened by the the, the risks and you know and talk about the downside whether in fact it exists or not um, 
my sense of this is we don't do any better, you know, assuming we make the best effort we can between now and the vote, my experience tells me we don't do any better a year from now. Um, even though we may dot I's and cross T's, the fundamentals of the project aren't going to change that much and people's opinion aren't going to be swayed. Um, and, and, and sometimes the, the, the forces that oppose these things actually get stronger um, by word of mouth and, and, and by innuendo and, and rumor that, that may not even be factual. So I, I think my sense is if we can't pass it this year, we probably can't pass it. If we don't have all the information by the deliberative session, never mind the vote, how do you think that's going to go? I, I think we will have enough information for an intelligent opinion and, and to guide the community into making the proper decision. They, no, no one's going to digest the details of this. In less it, than a it, month? It, in, in, because you don't have to present every dotted I and cross T because that, that gets into minutia that the, the, the town people, they can't comprehend. This is a cost and, and benefit analysis to, to the town people. You know, you, you have a cost associated with doing this to, to the best of our ability and the, and the engineer's ability. We will put those numbers down and we will inform the town of the benefit that can be accrued from this. And in my mind, we, we haven't done that, but the benefits, I, I think as Bob's been trying to point out and, and Fred and some of the others, the, the benefits potentially are enormous. Yes, I agree. Enormous. And, and so I, I think that that dialogue can, can take place relatively quickly because it, it doesn't take a whole lot of detail. I mean, when, we get, when this gets done and goes to the, to the bonding people, it's going to be a book, okay? And, and if you think they won't read the Warren article, they're certainly not going to read the book. But it's our job to let them know, hey, this is, the, this is the cost, this is how it can affect you, and guess what? If we're successful, you know, these are the benefits that are going to accrue to everyone in this town. And, and so on that, and, and remember, we're not approving it, and the town is not approving it. Nothing will happen until this is approved and accepted by people who are willing to give us $135 million. And you, I, I don't think there's an appreciation of just how tough that's going to be. But apparently, other companies and other towns have done this, and they've got their funding. So, uh, in this company, the, this engineering company that we have hired, has done due diligence work and done work here in New Hampshire and other places in the country, and been successful at it. And they have said that they will do all the crossing of the T's and the dotting of the I's, and they will provide us the information. I mean, I've said we're going to have transparency on this, and we are when we have the information. We're not going to make it up. You can't make promises you can't keep. Give them what you have. Be honest about it. The honest opinion is, is that this is something that's big, it's huge. We've been at it for over a year. A lot of people put a lot of time and energy into it. The town has put resources into it. <coughs> It either passes or it doesn't. You know, people, you know, if you start to put the minutiae in there, the, the, some of the comments I heard tonight are the same comments I heard on every single project I've ever heard that came forward. Uh, not that they're not valuable comments, it's just that it's the same kind of information you hear. There are fine ways to say no, not yes. Trying to find ways to say yes, and that's why we had a good engineering company. They said that they could find the bonding. They talked about angel bonding. Apparently, angel bonding is a thing, and it's out there. And what that is is people who will lend you the money at a lower interest rate because it's good for the environment, the overall 
outcome of the project is valuable to humanity. It's out there. They're going to pursue that. Can't guarantee it, but they will pursue it. Those are all the things that are going to happen. But we can't make it happen unless we have an article on it to give us the permission to move forward. And it's going to cost this kind of money to build it. Yeah, but it's not going to come out of your pocket. It's going to come out of the <coughs> first year of development when that plant's running. It, the state RSA protects the town, protects the people. It's not the end of the game, it's the beginning. But we have to start somewhere. And this is the beginning. That's what I got to say. Oh, the beginning is when you get the information you need to make an educated um, decision. I don't have that information. We're not engineers, Andy. We, Doesn't we can matter. only look at the numbers I don't and have what they present anything. to us. I have figures that people have thrown at me. I have no <coughs> information that I can look at that I can research myself. And that's what you were hearing from this audience tonight. And like I said, they're bringing forward the information you're looking for. However, one second. Great. However, we need to get this done tonight. And we well, all you knew can this pick was out. coming. We all knew this was coming. You, you can pick out whichever warrant you want. Right. Doesn't matter to me. It's just you're not going to have your five zero. You're going to have five uh, four to one. Maybe. Craig, excuse uh, me. I just forwarded the, the estimate from Grant. He did the performer. It's a draft. I just emailed it to Marissa, and she can distribute it to all the board members tomorrow morning. She'll have all those numbers. Okay, it's a very but detailed mind, pro a forma. Yeah, it's a, but it's very detailed, and the, it's very detailed. It, it covers the years. project year by year for 24 years. That's fine. That's a start. I think you'll find it a good start. This is why we hire these people to do this stuff. I guess the question is, is which warrant article do you want to present? And we're never going to get out of it if we don't pick one of them. <laughs> <laughs> or not. You have three choices. The big one, the shot one, or nothing. Nothing doesn't work. And I'm, and I'm here. <clears throat> I want your opinions. I think it should be worried so that we just do it for the feasibility project. You can't do it without the bond, though. No. You need the money to do the feasibility. That's the problem. That part, that whole thing, is part of the number. stated it. The feasibility study comes long before the warrant article. That's what justifies the warrant article and the appropriation. I think they misstated what they were saying. What they were saying? Yeah. <clears throat> if you need a feasibility study, you do that before you vote on what you're going to spend. Otherwise, nobody knows whether it's feasible or not. Right. That's okay. <clears throat> I think they misstated what they were trying to say. I mean, they've given us a pro forma with all those costs in there. Right. Okay? Right. It's not a detailed book like that. Right. Okay? But it's a pro forma of what it's going to cost and what to do the entire project. That's what they were talking about, not a feasibility study. Correct. Yes, you're the right. feasibility study should have been funded last year if that's what you wanted to do. Well, I mean, I would, we're past the feasibility study with that pro forma. Uh, and now, it is really unfortunate that the rest of the board hasn't seen that, if that's the case, because that, that, that pro forma is, is substantial. today, right? No, no. No, we had it. It was distributed a month ago. Was it? 
three uh, weeks ago. Anyway. That was a different performance. No, no. The, 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 the one that, the, the final one we saw was is about a week ago. Oh, okay. okay. No, so I, there was a pro forma that they went to the no, waste so energy much paperwork. <clears throat> now, why, why the rest of the board didn't get that, I don't know, but that's, that's a problem. Well, so, unless yes. somebody took it out of the mailboxes, because everything that comes to the board, I put in there. So. It is significantly beyond the feasibility study. Yeah. That's where you start. Yeah. And, and <coughs> We're that, way past that. It, it's the document that will ultimately go to the bonding agent, and that's the document that will be discussed, reviewed, modified, yep. altered, whatever it takes to get that bond approved. Oh, yeah. And to the extent that it's not a good business plan at the end of the day, Again, we don't have to worry about that because nobody's going to give us the money. Well, that's true. Well, that sounds like something we should have seen and all the other people should have seen as well. So. It does sound like that. Maybe mm -hmm. it would be different. You have no idea how much work went into what they did show us. It looks like simple stuff that they put up in a slideshow that lasted five minutes. But that took months. I get it, but if yeah. there's other information out there, we should have had it. Well, um, I'm just... Only if they put it in writing. Well, they have it writing, right? We do. The committee has it? Yes, we have it. Uh, not at most, not much of what the committee has done has been shared with my office. Right. Okay? That's why I wanted to be on the committee, so that, that this, this gap wouldn't occur. Uh, but not much of what the committee has done has been shared with me. Or us. If I don't get it, the board doesn't get it. Unless the committee hands it out to the individual members. And, and, um... Well, as you heard, Craig just sent it to Marissa. Marissa sending it to, to the... To the, the board members. We've just gotten all this information. It's not like... Yeah, the only thing we've ever had is conceptual drawings. We've just gotten this stuff. Like this today. morning, today, we've gotten drafts, but um, to yeah. confuse everybody with a draft, we didn't want to do that. We're trying to get the best information to send to everybody. So <coughs> I have the best information now. We just got it this afternoon. We've been waiting just like everybody else. Every time I've gotten a conceptual drawing, I think Fred's got a couple plans in his in his hand. I've sent I've sent the electronic versions up. Um, there's not much out there. That's that's the problem. We don't have much either. It just it takes a lot of time to to get this information. The, the quotes are the really tough for Walgren to get nailed down quotes. So, um, in in the so we can move on and also because I really hate rework yeah uh, I vote I make a motion that we go with the longer version of the Warren article I'll second that motion made and seconded any further discussion on the motion okay I'll take a roll call. Andy? Aye. Rebecca? Yep. Ann? Yep. Charlie? Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion passes. All right. We're going to move on. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we got a warrant article. We'll put it in and we'll defend it. Yep. Correct. We will okay. Defend it. Okay. Um, Next item on the is on the agenda. We're and thank you, everybody. I mean, I, I appreciate the detailed discussion. But you know, the house is dead. Came you guys have really worked on this hard. <laughs> I know. Yes. I want to express my appreciation to the board on this too, to be allowed to move forward because there's a, a number of us who have put a lot of effort into this and, and believe in it, and, and we and we want this to work for everybody, and we'll continue that work. No yeah. question. Okay, we got th uh, a couple of veterans exemptions yep. uh, that we need to do. Uh, approval for veterans exemption for Ronald Bellevue. Is there any discussion on that one? Has that uh, been 
looked at by the office? Is it ready to go? Uh, which one is it? I Blue. apologize for not having Blue. details Blue. on it, but. Blue. 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 It's not this one. That's no, because of the water issue. Yeah. This a week and a half. And that yeah, one with with a I got, I got the one here that needs to be signed. Oh. Okay. This needs to be signed down running. here by the board members. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that close. They so why don't we pass that down to the chairman? Get him to start signing stuff. Yep. Yeah. And the second one the same way. They, yeah. they both comply with the statute. So. That's what I wanted to hear. All the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted. And the periods yeah. are there. And you got to pull me and then sign. <laughs> yep, I get it. <laughs> on both of these. Okay, so we'll yes, take the we first do. one first. Oh, yeah, let me see which one yeah. I got in my hand. So I'll make a motion that we approve um, Mr. Ball, Ronald Ballou yep. for um, veterans. veterans exemption. All second. Motion been made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 I will. Right. Next one. Motion passes. These are toughies. I'll make a recommendation that we approve Frank Garcia for a veteran's exemption. I'll second. What was that motion? What? To do the next one. Frank Garcia. Yeah, no, no, no. What, what, what did you use? Frank Garcia. No, no. Veteran's exemption. That. Recommendation. He, yeah, he, he recommendation. said recommendation. Yeah. Recommendation. Well. Uh, yeah, you mean you, you motion. Motion to yeah. accept. Approve. Yeah. yeah. To approve. Yeah. Okay. Motion to approve. That, that's that's what caught my ear. Uh, motion to approve has been made by <clears throat> Mr. Finch. Second by me. Ms. Hartley. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, any any opposed? None opposed. Motion passes. No. <coughs> I will I sign these and send them along in a minute. Uh, next thing up is the request for funding by the library <coughs> trustee. Fred, want to talk talk a little bit? You and I talked about this at the office. Uh, one of the well, they don't have a warrant article, as I understand it, at this point. This is what you're requesting. This is just our quarterly payment. Yeah, this is the quarterly payment. There's no, there's no budget yet. Um, no, it's they, a budget. Well, approved budget. Well, right, there voted. 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 voted budget. This is based on last this fall budget. Yep. So they need the funds to pay their bills. Basically, bills and payroll. I suppose well, they're all bills. Well, you guys pay them. I paid them right. Things like oil, electricity, stuff like that. You need heat? Well, yeah, you need heat. Just touch a couple of books off. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have a wood stove in the building. Oil <laughs> Yeah. And oil delivery is coming soon, right? Yeah. Yes, tell us about that it. That time of year. I'll make a motion that we approve the funding of seven thousand dollars for the library trustees for their expenses. Second. Motion been made and seconded to approve the funding. Oh, this is actually it's a advance payment, right? Yes. Yes. Well, for the quarterly quarterly payment. Yeah. It's part of the quarterly. Yeah. Part yeah. of the quarterly payment. Uh, the first quarter. So the request for the funding for the library trustees for the amount of $7,000. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. The motion passes. Envelope. Oh, yeah. Uh, appointment for reappointment, the Long Range Planning Committee, Transportation Committee. This is uh, the, the alternate. Does anybody want to be an alternate on this committee? You can put my name down, but I'm not going to the meetings. <laughs> I, I already spent my a year doing that. And yeah, you don't want to be bored again. I mean, it's not that. It's a, yes, it is that. They, they don't get anything done. That's right. Yep. <coughs> they don't. Nobody wants to do it. Just put my name down. Okay. To them. I'll be the alternate. Yeah. With the boss's name down. All right. About the boss. 
You're the chairman. You're the acting boss. Okay, any old business? Okay, I feel old. No old business? Selectman's items? No selectman's items? Moving on. Not public session? No. We'll skip that tonight. Thank no. you very much. Motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. And makes a motion to adjourn. I'll come. Beat, it beat you, Andy. Somebody better second it. I'll second it. <laughs> I'll second it. She's loading the gun. Please you. second it. <laughs> you dragged your foot too long. The motion is made. Second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Wait, I ain't done yet. Done. I can't.